Hello. Hello everyone. I'm MVL and welcome to an MVL gaming live stream. Today I'm going to show you all of my PlayStation 1 physical collection. This is over 100 games including classics and hidden gems which you may not have heard of. So if you like the PlayStation you're going to want to check this out. Sit back, relax and enjoy and without any further ado let's get started straight away with Alien Trilogy, the first game of course in alphabetical order. What else order would I do it in? Um, I do like to have my games well organized so this is the first one that comes up, Alien Trilogy. A game I really loved in the arcades, particularly the uh, the first person bits. Uh, PlayStation game, pretty cool, first person shooter. I like it, got 93%, it says on the front here, from PlayStation Plus, it's pretty cool. Uh, the greatest movie tie-in ever. Hmm, that's a high praise from PlayStation Plus. The complete Alien Trilogy, one black death white knuckle nightmare, it says, which is a pretty cool selling point. Um, quite like this game, reminds me a lot of Doom and things like that. Love first person shooters. Give you a look at the back so you can see some of the screenshots, but it might not focus that well because it is a reflective case. So there you go, there's a look at the back of that. And yeah, I can't really say anything bad about this game. It's pretty good. From Fox and Acclaim. Have been some bad games from uh <laughs> from those. <laughs> I remember Independence uh, Day Fox interactive game. Uh pretty pretty bad for my recollection, but I played it because I had a lot fewer games back then, but Alien Trilogy for the PlayStation 1, that's where we're starting off. Next up, again in the A's, we have Anna Kornikova Smash Court Tennis. Sam M, how you doing my friend? Am I okay? I'm okay man, and I'm great to have you here my friend. How are you doing buddy? Great to see you. Still on the A's, so you're in good time my friend. And A, this is a pretty good one. This was recommended to me by my friend Pamphora Leo. Um, tennis game might make you think of Mario Tennis um, but this has a pretty funny mode in it and the reason I picked it up is there's a mode in this where you can fire the ball around and I think it's on fire like it's 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 pretty fun so this is this is not a bad tennis game by any means you're good oh I'm I'm well my friend thanks for being here buddy and uh, yeah 95% from PlayStation Power, it says here, the best multiplayer game money can buy, it says in the corner there. And you probably can't see the uh, screenshots on the back there because they're very small. And again, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have issues with the camera wanting to focus on these reflective cases. What I want to talk about actually, something I want to talk about is the cases for these uh, games in the Power region, like here in the UK. Our cases are thicker. They got that thickness from your uh, from your regular CD cases you might have had overseas like in America and um, this is because the manuals and I'll open this up actually because I'm not sure if I have the manual in this one uh, oh. you know what it doesn't want to open <laughs> hey I do have the manual oh, look at that there's an advertisement for the multi tap in there as well and the manuals will have multi languages in them so the manuals are a bit thicker you know while I'm at it actually if I'm gonna open them up I should go back and check Alien Trilogy because Alien Trilogy is quite quite hefty and yeah there's a manual in there because uh, we've only gone over a couple of games, and there's a there's an acclaim little booklet inside here as well. It's pretty cool. Might have a little glance at that. <laughs> this is pretty cool, actually. I'm glad I went back and checked this one. There's a little uh, quick save yourself uh, little flyer in here for PlayStation Plus, a different PlayStation Plus at the time. Uh, it's an incredible reader offer for the PlayStation Plus magazine, and then there's information on games uh, as well. So I'm glad I took a look at that. We'll probably try and look at all of the um, all of the manuals and such as we go through it. The book said loads of different languages. Yeah, they did. They did in our region. Exactly. Uh, so that's why our cases are a little bit thicker. And moving on, still in the A's. Still in the A's, we have another good one. And this one, this one is an absolute classic. And it is Ape Escape. Love this game. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the first or one of the first games to use the analog thumbsticks on the controllers. I used to be a big fan on the PlayStation 1 of the regular controller that didn't have the thumbsticks. So I would use the D-pad to move around and I found that a lot easier. You did that in games like Resident Evil, Fear Effect and things like that and fighting games as well I found it a lot easier to use the D-pad. They introduced a new controller 
believe this was the first game to take advantage of it properly. And it is a Sony game, after all. And uh, you had a lot more freedom of movement with the thumbsticks. And this game really took advantage of it because you moved around with it and you, you know, you had more control with it. Pretty cool. This is, uh, this is Platinum. You can tell that because it's silver. Platinum is ugly. The side of it is also in silver instead of black. Not a black box. Uh, I have very few Platinum games in my collection for the reason that they don't look very nice. Um, I believe my copy of Crash Bandicoot was uh, Platinum, but that game unfortunately has gone missing. I still have the case, I don't have the disc. Uh, I'll also add at this point, a reason why I am missing some number of classic games in my collection is I had water damage to my collection on not one, but two occasions, and I lost a good amount of games, and then a certain amount over time went missing as well. So I am still trying to rebuild elements of my collection uh, through, the, through time. Uh, but there's a look on the back. Uh, if it wants to focus on it, you can see some of the screenshots. Uh, this is a really good game. This is I, I had a lot of fun with this game. I used to play it. I used to play it on demo disc all the time. If you guys remember demo discs, you used to get them in magazines, and then even before the PlayStation, you used to get them for PC games. You get floppy disks in magazines and stuff like that. It was really cool. Uh, a lot of for the Commodore 64. Um, uh, I, sh I, sh I should say the Commodore Amiga, Amiga <laughs> at least in my instance. Um, I would I would play a lot of games on uh, floppy disks and tapes, and I believe there were for the for the Commodore as well. You know, free games and cassettes. Correct me if I'm wrong again, but definitely on the on the Amiga and on the PlayStation, I took advantage of um, I took advantage of a lot a lot of demo discs to play my games. Hey Queen, welcome to the stream, my friend. How are you doing? Good to see you. And I suppose I should check if this has um, this is actually a good a good um, a good time to look in the manual. Uh, inside of the case actually because in here you can see an advertisement for the DualShock controller uh, This is a lovely transparent blue kind of transparent controllers for the thing. Hey, thanks for leaving a like queen much appreciated Thank you so much. That helps more people see the stream uh, There's an advertisement for this and uh, the manuals in here and something else important for the um, for the uh, pl Platinum there we go. I can talk is that the discs Oh, hello. Well, the discs are supposed to be uh, silver. I guess not on this one. This looks like a this looks like a regular disc, but normally a platinum disc is silver with no artwork on. This actually this is probably a um this is probably not a platinum disc. That's interesting. This is pretty cool. I don't like the I don't like the disc with no artwork. Or maybe this one's exempt from that. You love demo discs that come with original uh PCs? Yeah. Uh PlayStation as well, yeah. Dinosaur um and the whales on the disc oh my goodness like i i i played i played so many demos on the playstation i had way more demos than i had games back in the day i had much fewer games i want to say i had less than 20 maybe less than 15 perhaps less than 10 games at the time i still have a number of my original games in the collection but certainly didn't have the amount i have now i have over 100 playstation 1 games uh it, it makes up uh, about a 15th a 15th of my collection at this point Hey, Hardcore Pick and Purple, welcome to the stream. Big game of like you didn't do it. Well, I don't know, I'm gonna keep my eye on you anyway. <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? Uh, we're still on the A's anyhow, we're still on the A's. So let's look up, but demos are awesome. Uh, for things like the Commodore Amiga, absolutely love demos on floppy disks. Pretty sure they pretty sure they had tapes uh, with magazines as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure some of my tapes are demos. Yeah, no, no, certainly my, I, I do have tape demos. I have some of them back there. So they, yes, they were. I don't know what I was talking about earlier. I definitely have tapes. They definitely came with the Commodore as well. But uh, Commodore, Commodore tapes were really cheap as well. But anyway, we're still on the A's. Asteroids. Talking about classics. It animate the dinosaur to show off. <laughs> power of the PlayStation. The power of the PlayStation. Man, um, I really love... For, unfortunately, I don't have any demo discs anymore. But... Almost all of the games, like stuff like Spyro, I had a demo of the first level, and that's all I got to play of it. I never actually bought Spyro. I think the same for Medieval and maybe Soul Reaver at the time as well. Classic games. Get the beard grown out. <laughs> I know, right? I had to I had to diminish the beard's power, Laku. I apologize. For anyone that came here wanting to see a full beard, I've let you down. My apologies, my friends. You have loads of tapes of Sinclair user. Oh, there we go. There we go. See, I don't know what I was talking about earlier. I definitely have demo tapes, but I remember, I remember more vividly that I had the, um, I had the floppy disks for the Amiga because I collected those. I didn't necessarily collect the tapes as much because um, I found at the time tapes a lot easier to break. <laughs> um, yeah, back to Rock the New Millennium. This is a uh, 3D version of Asteroids. 
as you can tell from the back there, it's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. I mean, it's not as good as the original uh, uh, version, Siphon Filter. Siphon Filter is in the collection. We'll get to it. It's in the S's. And it is an awesome, it is a, I should say super game. I should use an S, really. Um, but yeah, this is an okay version of Asteroids. Um, the original classic game is included in this as well, which is pretty cool. And controls quite well with a DualShock uh, controller, I should say. So it's not that bad. You prefer a joystick. I'm struggling to open these cases. <laughs> I'm struggling to open these cases. Hey, look at that. Okay, the manual is in here. And the disc is actually not that exciting. So we'll move on from this one. Uh, but we're going to move on to the Bs. Because it, it's going to get better from here. Let me try to use some sort of alphabetical sense to this. But we're going to move on to a game that I have played... Uh, with my friend the Jonin Monkey on the Danger Zone, that's uh, a video on the channel. Uh, there's a playlist for the Danger Zone as well. And it is um, Batman Forever, the arcade game. This is a side-scrolling beat-em-up. And you know what? It's not that bad. It's pretty good, actually. Hey, Inspired Champion, how are you doing, my friend? You used to get loads from the newsagent. I know, right? Newsagent is actually where you, I used to get my Commodore 64 games because the newsagent sold... Um, so value games really cheap, so it was a good way to get like uh, Commodore 64 games. And for the for the uh, Commodore Amiga, I pretty much just bought demos, which is why I remember that so well. How am I doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for joining me. It's awesome to have you guys here. I appreciate you guys showing up. We've got a, we've got a bunch of PlayStation games. We've got stacks and stacks of PlayStation games to talk about. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there's some clips at the back, but you can see a lot more of this game in my video with Jen and Monkey. Uh, where we play this game, and I think we die to uh, sugar and spice, I think they're called. Um, the henchmen, or I should say, um, hench people, whatever your correct term might be, uh, of the uh, of Two-Face. Uh, which is pretty cool, it's a pretty cool game. You like my collections? Why, thank you, Inspired. I like my collections too. I like having them complete. So this one is complete, it has the manual, and it has the disc in there, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, always like to get them with a manual if I can. If I can't find them with a manual, it's kind of annoying because I want to upgrade. It's especially prevalent in games that have boxes, like the Game Boy. I always want to get the, you know, the box and stuff, but it makes it much more expensive to have it complete. Oh man, that, that sucks inspired. I hope you do better, my friend. I hope you're getting alright. Uh, I'm glad to have you here, my friend. Awesome to see you. Next up, we're in the Bs, and it's Blast Radius. And this one really blows. See what I see what I did there. See what I see what I did there. You see, yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for the like. Inspired, much appreciate, my friend. And the the shots of the gameplay on this are actually really really small, really small. So you probably can't see that. But this is a uh, this is a space shoot 'em up third person 3D style. They had a lot of these at the time. And uh, this one does have the manual and the disc. Um, I don't remember much. Look at how stupid this disc art is. Look at this disc art. That is stu that's stupid. <laughs> it, you can barely tell it says Blast Radius. That is the worst disc art. And it's black and white as well. That is silly. Need for Speed. You know, I do have a crippling need for speed. Uh, but I don't actually have a uh, need for speed on the PlayStation. I have it on some other consoles. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's move on to another game I've done on the Danger Zone, and it is Blaze and Blade. I'm very surprised you can see this because it's in a protective case. Um, you know, I'm, my memory is serving me so badly, uh, but I forget where I got these protective cases from. But I did a video about it. Uh, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I forget. It, there's a video on the channel. I forget the name. I still order from them, but I forget the name of it. But this is in a protective case. I played this on the Danger Zone. With the Jonin Monkey, another another game I did uh, did for that. Yeah, you know, forgetting all sorts of things, Commodore demos and protective cases. <laughs> um, this is a really cool game. This is a role playing game. It's a three D role playing game. The clips on the back are really small again, so you might not be able to see it so well, especially since it's in a protective case, so it's uh, kind of glowing up. Actually, I'm gonna have to get it out of this anyway to check. Uh, I'm pretty sure the manual's in there. Uh, uh, which means I'll get my greasy fingers on it, which defeats the point of it being in a protective case. But these are really good protective cases. Uh, you can get the information about them from uh, my video on the channel. <laughs> I guess it doesn't, doesn't come to me right now. But let's have a look inside of here. And it has some awesome artwork on it. Um, it actually comes to mind that the video I did with this with the Journey Monkey hasn't been released yet, but it is on the cutting room floor. It'll come out someday. Another black and white, another black and white disc. 
Not sure why there's so many black and white discs. I know it's cheaper, but I always like to see them in colour if I can get them. And I'll put that back in there. By the way, these cases are really good. Um, so you can find out <laughs> where they come where they come from. There's a link to it in the video about them on my channel. And next up we have Bomberman. Yeah. And this game really blows, but you know, in, in a good way. <laughs> it blows stuff up. Uh, okay, so um should see if I can find Need for Seed Hop the Suit. I've got a couple of Need, need for Speeds on on the PS2 and I think original Xbox littered around the place. Um I do I do I do like my racing games. Um I like this sort of thing though as well. And uh yeah, this is an updated version of the original Bomberman. You might be able to see from the clips on the back, which is not gonna focus very well, but that's gonna be a theme of the video because it's live, what are you gonna do? Um has an updated version. Uh would it be nice if they included the original game on this as well? Uh the updated graphics do look pretty nice, but um I, I prefer the original. And we can open this up, and ooh, look at that! I've even got the little uh, little card in there as well. That's pretty cool. Got the manual in here, and this disc is in color. I like to have different uh, disc art on my games as well. Bomberman is a great game series. I'm glad to have that in the collection. And uh, talking of which, we have another Bomberman game. This is. Bomberman World, and this one has a sticker on it advertising the DualShock controller. Uh, the analog controller, it is compatible. It's a superb joypad, says Games Master on the front here. So there's a blurb about the controller, but not the game on the front. As I understand, this is a multiplayer game, and it, it really is kind of a party game. Bomberman is back in this game, and it's a, it's a pretty cool game. It's a pretty cool game. It's got it's got a good look to it. The graphics are really pleasing, and it does have a pretty good single player as well. And look at that. We have another advertisement for the controller in here as well, as well as the manual. And the disc is in full color. How about that? That is nice. It's got a P on it. Um, no one has P on this disc. This uh, you normally see this in second-hand places. If the if a disc is pre-owned, they might put that on it to distinguish it from new ones. That's probably why that's there. All right, I'm gonna try and keep these uh, in some sort of order as well as I put them away, so that I can get them. I can get them back on the shelf fairly expediently. And uh, next up, also in the bees, we have Bushido Blade. This is a fighting game, a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. It's a 3D fighting game. Most of the games on the PlayStation are 3D. It's pretty cool. It's one of those games where it goes really fast. So if you hit someone with your blade, you're probably gonna take them out. It's pretty cool, it's got an interesting fighting style. It's not my favourite kind of fighting game. Uh, you, it's more emphasis on blocking and getting one good successful stab in with your uh, weapon rather than a game might, like Tekken which might, um, which might put emphasis on combos. So not, not my favourite type of fighting game, not saying this is bad by any means, it's actually pretty cool. But uh, oh, and I will say this has a, an older style case. The other cases you might notice have uh, a lot more plastic, like on the top. This one has black plastic on the top and the sides. A different case. This was the the older case they had, um, and this it actually holds up a little better than the other ones. An advertisement for the memory card in there. You may find these days that your memory cards on the PlayStation might be failing um, because they only have so many times they can hold, they can write and rewrite the data on it, which is a thing, but. Other than that, uh, this does have the uh, manual in here, and whoop, the disc is in here as well. And this actually is a kind of interesting case, but see there's a, more distinguishing features here on the inside as well. You can see it's a little different, it's got these uh, holes, um, so you might be able to get this out easier. I often do have to replace cases on my games, so this would be one that might be a little easier to replace, even though the manual doesn't quite, quite sit in here correctly. I'm going to go put that back. All right move up to see what's next and it is going to be d12 final resistance oh yeah okay this is a shooting game d12 the most adrenaline soaked game of the year says playstation magazine wow uh, but bear in mind age rating 11 plus for this one um aliens have invaded <gasps> okay you are the final resistance. Nice how they work that one in, right? There's some clips of the gameplay. Don't remember much about this one. 
I'm pretty sure I got this uh, very cheap. Even even back in the day, um, games that weren't sort of um, well known or you know got a lot of promotion, they would sink down the value fairly quickly as they do nowadays. A game might come out at full price and then drop down to pretty much the, um, the the value bin eventually. And I think this was one of those situations where I got it really cheap. I do believe I got it new. Uh, I, I believe, even though it has a uh, a uh, pretty big scratch. I don't know if you can see it on the cover. On, on the front here, a lot of my games will have that. Inky, yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's an advertisement for the um, PlayStation 2 Extermination, a game I also have. Um, that's pretty cool. I like this. Uh, this must have been a late release on the uh, on the PlayStation 1. It also has the uh, manual in here, an advertisement for the DualShock controller. And the disc is in full color, which is pretty nice. So it must be a late release. I'm going to pick up, pick up the little advertisement that I dropped on the floor. Uh, as you can see, these ones uh, have the clear plastic on the front, and it should say PlayStation there. You might not be able to see it very well, but it'll say, it'll say PlayStation. All right, next up in the seas, we have Colony Wars. These are pretty fun uh, space shooters, 3D space shooters. I actually prefer 2D space shooters, but you've got a lot more 3D games on the PlayStation, of course, because that was the big thing about it. I look on the back there and see uh, some of the gameplay. It's a pretty cool game, a pretty cool series. It's, uh, it's nice and fun, nice and challenging as well. Uh, Colony Wars is pretty cool. All right. Open this up, and I have what looks like most of the manual here, and the discs. So the manual, it looks like I'm missing the front page, but I have the rest of the manual in here. And it's full colour, which is pretty cool. And this is a two-disc case, a variant of the cases you might have already seen. Uh, two discs are in here. You can fit them. Uh, there are multiple, um, multiple disc variants, uh, which is kind of a mouthful. Hey, Sherlock, welcome to the stream, my friend. Looks good. Good to hear that, my friend. I'm glad to have you here, buddy. Um, there are multiple variations. This is one of them. On this version, uh, it will be in the it will be in the form factor of a regular case, as you can see. But when you open it up, there will be sort of just an extra place for a disc, so they can fit it all in. You'll see um, later on as I go through some more of my games. Um, some of them had a different way of doing this, uh, which is more akin to what you might see on CDs. But we'll get to that. Uh, but yeah, that is Colony Wars. Next up, another Colony Wars game, Colony Wars Red Sun. Uh, more of the same, the fight for mankind continues, or has begun as it would say in this blurb on the back here. Pretty cool game. Uh, I do believe this had some pretty cool cutscenes in it as well. Look at that, there's an advertisement for not just the DualShock controller in some transparent colouring, but a transparent memory card. Now that is... That is just like 90s, early 2000s, written all over it, isn't it? That is pretty awesome. Uh, manual here, and a disc, a red disc. Ooh. Small Soldiers. Oh, I do not have that game, but that is a cool game. Toy Story as well. Toy Story is a pretty cool game. Um, I, Toy Story is a, is a sweet game as well on multiple systems, but um, it's one I don't have currently, um, but I am looking to pick up a ton of stuff. I have a list on my phone of games I'm looking to pick up, as long as the games that I currently have as well. So it is, it is never ending the search for games, as many of you fellow game collectors know. Uh, here's a great game. It is uh, Command and Conquer Red Alert from EA. Um, EA, of course, um, eight Westwood Studios, <laughs> who uh, made uh, June 2, the kind of the first of the Command and Conquer style games, uh, which was on previous systems, most notably the Amiga, which I loved. Um, I only have Red Alert on the PlayStation. Most of them I have on the PC. I have multiple copies on the PC, actually. Um, a lot better to play these games on the PC. Using a mouse is a lot easier to control it, and the graphics are a lot better. So, um, I just wanted a plug-and-play version, and I think I found this in a charity shop for really cheap. And this is a, a, a classics version. It's not as nasty as Platinum Case, but it's pretty nasty looking. And I believe these discs need, need cleaning because the opening cinematic keeps cutting out when I play this. Um, but it's a great uh, strategy game. I love this game. Absolutely love it. Look at that. It's got Westwood written on the back. Uh, so before Westwood was no longer a thing. And this is a double disc game. 
even though this is some sort of classic version, so the discs are really plain, they're just red, and the manual is pretty plain looking, it's still a great game, despite how plain it looks. Alright, moving on to another uh, range. We're still in the seas, and it is Crisis Beat. This is a 3D beat em up game. Um, I think I showed you one of these before um, previously, I can't remember which game it was, in these kind of value cases. Um, despite this case, I don't think this was released outside of this range. Many games came uh, to Europe in this kind of, um, this sort of thing, like a, like a value range. Certainly in the, uh, in the Midas Pocket Price range, you'll see later on, there are several games that weren't released in regular cases, they just have this kind of artwork. This is a pretty good game, this is a good beat em up. Um, Pretty cool looking cover as you can see. I actually quite like this game. Uh, there's very little you can see on the back because of the style of the case. Uh, but this is a sweet game. You can see it in my pickup videos. And by the way, if you like pickup videos, I have a current one on the channel for uh, last month, which you can check out. Make sure you do because it's got gameplay footage included of every game. And there's a better look at the cover actually because it's on the manual in full. Lovely looking. And there is a cool looking disc here as well, even though it's in black and white. But, as I mentioned previously, I love to have these complete if I can. Alright, next up in an old style case, we have Crusader. No remorse. Yeah, non-stop action. Look at that. that. Does that remind you of Star Wars much? Because that, that looks like a Star Wars uh, trooper, doesn't it? One of the Emperor's uh, Royal Guard, if I'm not mistaken, with the red uh, donned outfit. Pretty badass, and this is an old style case with the black top and sides. This is an isometric shooter, which actually makes it pretty awkward to control, but it's a pretty cool game. It's an unusual game. I'm glad to have it in the collection. It does, yeah, it definitely does. It definitely looks like a Star Wars trooper. I think that's what attracted me to it. No manual here, unfortunately, but the disc, I actually really like the disc art there, even though it's just red and black. Um, it's pretty cool, and look at that. That's like old old school Photoshop. They've just done misting effect. I love it. I love it. I love everything about that. All right, let's move on. <laughs> it looks like the troopers from the Skywalker film. Yeah. All right. Next up is Might and Magic Crusaders of Might and Magic. Blood pumping action. It says from 3DO, which is not the most reputable source. <laughs> Um, but, you know, 3DO did make some uh, okay things, uh, maybe not consoles and certain games, but uh, this is alright, this is alright, part of the Might and Magic series, a long running series across many consoles and devices, and um, I believe this one was okay, I have played it, I don't remember much about it, but I believe it was not bad. Blood Pumping Action advertises itself as, let's check, I'm uh, finding these a lot easier to open up now, but that's because most of them are cracked. I don't know if you can see there's a, a crack on there. Most of them are cracked, so they're coming open a bit easier because these cases suck. You've got the manual in there and the disc. Nothing too special about the artwork there, although that does kind of look like the England flag. So that's interesting. Uh, that uh, red cross. All right, next up we're on to the Ds, and um, we are going to descend into the depths of Descent 2. This is a first-person space shooter. And this is actually really good. Um, quite like this game. I also have Descent 1, but I don't have the case for it. I only have the disc. Um, so I have both Descent games. Um, PlayStation 1 games, pretty cool. I'm a big fan of these. They play really well. See from the clips on the back there, they look pretty good. And I actually quite like... Uh, I love shooters in general. I'm not biggest fan of 3D shooters, but I do like these games. And in here you have the manual. And the disc in there as well, which I thought was upside down, but it's not. Alright, pretty cool looking game. Alright, next up. This game is one of my favourites. One of my favourites for many reasons. And this was definitely one I had uh, back in the day. Old Star Case here. Uh, this isn't actually the, my original copy, but I did have this back in the day. Uh, my original copy was unfortunately damaged. Uh, or, or it was platinum and I upgraded it, either way. Um, Die Hard Trilogy, now you're talking, yippee ki -yay. All right, this is a collection of games together. It is awesome. You've got Die Hard, which is a third-person shooter. Die Hard 2, Die Harder, which is a light gun game. 
And then you've got uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance, which is a car game, which was my least favourite, to be honest, a racing game. It was really hard. Three Incredible Adventures on one intense game. Okay, the, the text on the back here is really awkward. Um, love this. So, in the PAL region, and only in the PAL region, was Die Hard 2 light gun compatible. Uh, you couldn't use the gun com, I think. You had to use the Justifier, uh, which is a, the Konami light gun. And then you could play this with a light gun or any other light gun that could do that. You know, third party ones. I had a lot of third party ones. I've even streamed the light gun game from this as well. So you can go back and check that out um, as proof that it does work. You play this game. I know, right? I love light gun games. And for that reason, this holds a special place in my heart. And the case here is really awkward because the manual is so big because it's, it's multiple languages because it's a power release. And uh, multiple games, so the manual is really thick, and I think this must be a platinum disc. No, it's not platinum because it doesn't say platinum, but it's it's bad disc artwork because it is black. It is silver. Ugh, ugh. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the manual barely fits in this thing, uh, so the case doesn't actually close properly. But it is an awesome game. And moving on from that, what could possibly be next, my friends? What could possibly be next other than the Die Hard trilogy? Viva Las Vegas! Hey Tony, welcome to the stream my friend. How are you doing buddy? Awesome to have you here. There's plenty more games to come. We're only uh, we're only on the D's and there are stacks of games to my right. So fear not my friend. Um, you actually can barely see the Viva Las Vegas. It's written down there very sorry. This is a sequel. Uh, uh, this is a sequel to the first game. Another three games on this collection. I did not know about this until recently. How are you doing, Tony, by the way, my friend? Good to have you here. So you have another third-person shooter, another light gun game, and another racing game. yippee ki -yay! John McClane is back. Now, I don't believe this to be uh, as good as the previous one, but certainly the light gun game is pretty cool, and the, uh, the third-person shooter is pretty cool as well. I haven't played the driving game, but I'll have to have this in my collection. I don't think that I have a manual for this. Nope. But the disc is in colour here, so that's something. Gotta get myself a manual for that to have it complete, because otherwise, ugh, it's not complete. Alright guys, still on the Ds, and this one is an absolute classic. From the makers of Resident Evil. Dino Crisis. That's right, my friends, Dino Crisis. This is a game I think I played on demo a hell of a lot before I actually got myself a copy of it. Um... From the creators of the Resident Evil series, Dino Crisis. It is a survival horror featuring dinosaurs. Love it. It is a really cool game. I like the main character. I like how the game plays. A lot of people have uh, problems with the controls of this game. I'm really used to it. I'm really used to it. So I've, I've played a lot of these games, so I don't have any problem with the controls. I think it's fine. You play that, it's a very awesome game. It is indeed Hardcore Pink and Purple. And unfortunately, unfortunately no manual here, although uh, the official Dino Crisis strategy guide is available, it informs me on the back here, and the uh, inlay has come out here. Uh, cool looking disc, there's, there's just a big bite happening on the front of it, I like that. A lot of work and a little fun, nice. You gotta work hard and play hard, that's how it is. Uh, next up, this is a game, uh, which is a Doom clone. It's actually from the guys that brought you uh, Spyro, believe it or not, if I have that correct. It is uh, Disruptor, the mother of all shoot 'em ups. Uh, it's a Doom clone on the PlayStation. It actually plays pretty well. It is, uh, I would say, a hidden gem. Very, very, uh, very not so known about. And uh, as I mentioned previously, this is one of the variants on the. Uh, on the double discs so this um, in fact does this yeah this is very interesting as well so um, this is a variant for the for the multiple disc cases where it, it looks like kind of um, what you might find on CDs where it has um, this style of um, opening from more than one side uh, on the front here but this this one and this is a, this is not uncommon only actually has one disc in it I don't know if you can see that because it doesn't want to focus on it but it only has one disc in it. Whoa, just one disc. There you go. You can barely see it, but in the corner there it says one disc. Um, so yeah, it only has one disc, so there's no reason for this case whatsoever. But that's what it came in. 
and there's the disc right there there's the manual and then uh, like i mentioned it will open up on the other side as well for absolutely no reason because there isn't this space for another for two extra discs here but there's nothing there and there's nothing there either so why this case <laughs> but uh but that's the thing Dino Crisis, you play much? Yeah, it is a it is a really cool game. I love survival horrors, particularly when we come to the Resident Evil series. Uh, that is where my heart lives. Next up, we have Driver 2, back on the streets. This is a platinum case, so it's ugly and silver. Don't like these cases. Uh, hopefully this game will be silver, so I can show you what they look like. Enter Tanner, the driver. This is a, a pretty cool game, a very well received game. I've got to be completely honest, this is not so much my jam. Um, I struggle a bit more with driving games. I like my fighting games and I like my um, Grand Theft Auto when it comes to driving. Struggling a bit on this one, but I know this is a very well received game. Uh, and yeah, okay, so here are the platinum discs. Uh, there's the uh, manual there, platinum again, really, really nasty looking. And we've got some uh, insert here as well. And then you can see the platinum discs. My goodness, are they horrible. Are they absolutely horrible? They have no artwork on them whatsoever. They say platinum on them. And ugh, they're just disgusting. They're, they're just disgusting. I don't want to show you guys them anymore because they're just horrible. Ugh. That's why I don't like having platinum games in my collection. Uh, so very few of those. Next up. Uh, we have a Duke Nukem game. Now I definitely had more Duke Nukem games in my collection. Some of them went missing at some point or another, but this is the one I still have. And it is uh, Duke Nukem Land of the Babes. Um, I definitely loved playing the original Duke Nukem on the PC back in the day. Another classic game. Driver, you love it. Vroom. Nice. Um, the Man, The Mission, The Babes. Um, so this is a third person um, Duke Nukem game. Uh, I don't really believe the series translated very well from first person shooter to uh, third person, but it's still an alright game. It's not quite as bad as everyone puts it out to be. It's just not as good as the other Duke Nukem games, certainly. Um, I've got the manual in here included, and the disc is there as well, but really nasty artwork there. Um, <laughs> really, really nasty. <laughs> uh, there you go. You played that Duke Nukem also, you like it? Yeah, they're not as bad, they're not as bad as everyone says they are. But they're definitely, they're definitely not as good as the originals. Uh, the originals, uh, first person shooters are definitely better. Alright guys, I have a definite hidden gem here. Um, that maybe not a lot of you might have heard about, but it is definitely a good one. And it leads on well to some of the other games we're going to get to, like the Final Fantasies. And it is Urguys. Now, can you spot that character in the middle? Just behind that uh, police officer, that's Cloud. What on earth? This is a this is a fighting game, and it's got Cloud in. What is going on here? So this is a fighting game. It also features Final Fantasy characters in, which is pretty badass. And this is a pretty cool game. I uh, found out about this a while ago, a good while ago, and it is a unique game to say the to say the least. And uh, it's not a bad fighter either. And look at that, you got Chocobo Racing advertised in it, which is pretty cool. There's a better look at the cover, which might come into focus because it's uh, less reflective. Or not. But there you go. And there's the disc there as well. So this is a pretty good game. Pretty, pretty, um, pretty under the radar as well. So I like that. Did play the OG series. <laughs> nice. Oh, you didn't play the OG series. Ah, I see, I see, I see. I, yeah, they definitely, definitely the uh, original Duke Nukem's were much better. Um, you probably want to get a PC version and not a, not a console version of the original Duke Nukem's because they were heavily cut down in content, or I should say censored, on the console versions. Although I think there's a PlayStation 4 version out uh, nowadays which has everything included. But correct me if I'm wrong, because I've probably said a lot of stuff that's not correct thus far. Anyway... Next up, we're on to Eliminator. It's another space shooter. Pretty cool one. It's really colourful, and I like that. There's a lot. There's a lot going on on this game case. Explosions everywhere. Um, pretty cool looking game. Let's open this up. See what we got in here. We have the manual, 
And the disc, the disc is very plain artwork, but that's pretty cool. That's Eliminator. All right, next up. This is one for everybody because it's everybody's golf. That's right. Hey, guys, loves games. How are you doing, my friend? Welcome to the stream. And for one who loves games, you're in the right place, my friend, because we have many, many more games to come. We've got, I think, over 70 more PlayStation games to come. So good to see you, my friend. Awesome to have you here. And this is Everybody's Golf. Uh, it's a golf game. It's a pretty cartoony one. And it's one I actually quite like. Um, I do like my golf games as long as the controls aren't too, uh, aren't too finicky. Uh, it's pretty cool. And I think I got this in a charity shop really cheap as well. In here I have the manual. Most of them you might have seen so far I have the manual. And uh, look at that artwork on the, on the disc there. That's pretty nice. Alright. Oh no, I broke the case. Or oh, the case was already broken. All right, yeah, the case was already broken because half of the um, half of the material is gone there. But that happens a lot with these cases. Next up, this is one of the ones from my original collection, and it's, it's just because I had so few games. I know this game is not well received, uh, but I really like it. Um, and it is Evil Zone for the PlayStation One. Well, I mean, all these games are from the PlayStation One. Force of Habit, me saying it's for PS One. This is a fighting game. It's very cartoony, it's got a lot of anime feel to it. Cheap plastic, it is cheap plastic, I know, these, these cases break so easily. And this is a really cool fighting game. Um, it has uh, what I believe to be a uh, really bad English overdubbing, which was certainly the case on a lot of um, Japanese animation that came over to the UK and America for that matter, it might be dubbed and uh, just made up. This was often the case with things like Cartoon Network, they might just make up the dubbing, or CNX or whatever you want to call it. And they would just make up the dubbing and not use the original dubbing. I thought that was the case with this game because the stories are so ridiculous, but actually they're accurate on this game. This game has really silly stories. You've got a superhero, you've got um, just crazy characters. It's a crazy fun game, and I actually quite liked it. Uh, back in the day, but then I had a lot fewer games back then, so I had to play what I had. Uh, but there you go, Evil Zone, got the manual, and the disc is still there. Look at that disc art as well. Alright, so moving on to the next game, which is our future, and that is the future is about to become history in Excalibur 2055 AD. 2555 AD, who knows, this is the future. Um, this is an interesting game. It's a third person, um, I guess, platformer. It's a, it's a relatively interesting game. I do know a little uh, interesting information about this game. And that is that the character looks significantly different on the, uh, on the UK or I guess PAL version compared to the American uh, release. I think um, in this one she is brunette and has... Uh, shorts or trousers in the american version she's blonde and she has she's basically wearing like skimpy underpants um don't know why she's so underdressed in the american version compared to the uh, i mean she, i'm essentially wearing a thong or whatever i don't know why she's so underdressed in the american version and just not in the uk version but that's the difference um often we would share a release with um territories with much more censorship like the german version might be uh, so maybe that's the reason. Uh, certainly that was the case uh, with things like the Super Nintendo back in the day with things like Zombies Ate My Neighbors and back for the NES even with uh, Probotector which we got instead of Contra. So that could be the reason. Just a little bit of censoring um, from other regions. And do have the manual in here. Would like to actually get the American version because it's different. And the disc is not, not nothing special, it's just black and white. But there you go, that's a little bit of interesting information about this game. Next up, who are you going to call? It's going to be the Ghostbusters. The new Ghostbusters at that, the ultimate invasion. This is a light gun shooter. And I know I often tell you guys that I absolutely love, love, love light gun shooters. I do, I, I really do like light gun shooters a lot. However... I don't really like this game, it's not good. It's not a good game, it's really cheap. Uh, I think the enemies are two dimensional. Uh, and It's just not a good game, I have to be honest. I would put this, I would put this probably one of, one of the worst, perhaps. No, that's not true, I think I'm being overly harsh. It's definitely playable. 
It's definitely playable. I may even live stream it down the line at some point to show you guys what it's like. It's definitely playable. It's just really underwhelming for what it is. A Ghostbusters, uh, a Ghostbusters light gun shooter. You never heard of that? I know, right? It sounds like it should be good, but it's just, it's just not, <laughs> which is a real shame. All right, next up, um, if that, if that, if ghosts are your fears, then you're about to get even more afraid, because next up, it's fear effect. Yeah, all right. Absolutely loved this game, survival horror game. Absolutely loved it. Had those kind of Resident Evil uh, tank controls, if you will. Very cinematic game, lots of story going on, really dark story, really good game. Absolutely loved it. Um, I think I rented this out back in the day, played it all the way through, absolutely loved it. Uh, this version, oh my goodness, look at this, this is what I'm talking about with the cheap, cheap cases. I have the discs, there's one of the discs. <laughs> I, have, I have the manual. Which is pretty nice artwork actually. You might not have seen it on the front of the cover so well, but there you go. And we have a little, uh, li a little advert. Look, look at how cool that is. Like a PlayStation and controllers inside of a TV. That's pretty badass. I like that. That looks pretty neat. And then we have uh, more discs, multiple disc game. There's another disc. And then if it wants to open up and not break, oh, it it, it broke a bit. We have some more of the discs there. All right. Oh my goodness! Look at this! Look at this! Ugh! It's like when I did the unboxing of Wonder Boy all over again. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put that down, and then I will deal with that later. Um, but that's not the worst of my fears because next up is Fear Effect Two. That's right, Fear Effect Two. Um, they made a couple of choices to the characters that I don't necessarily um, like, especially if you uh, if you played through the story a certain way. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, it, it doesn't kind of it doesn't kind of match up in this game. But Retro Helix Fear Effect Two, cool game, survival horror game, more of the same. Really good looking game though. Really shows off what they can do with the PlayStation. I like these kind of games a lot. Um, Games here said uh, big guns, blissful babes, and brain taxing gameplay. Welcome to video game paradise. Well, if that doesn't sell you, what does? Uh, inside here, it looks like I might be missing the manual. But we have the disc. Disappointingly, all have the same artwork. That's a little disappointing. The previous game in the series, they had different artwork. Oh, look, there's the manual. There's the manual, and we have the. Uh, this in here as well. Do I have okay four discs on this game? Woo, my goodness! And that was a big advantage on the CD technology the PlayStation had versus the cartridges of the N64 that you could have these multiple disc games. Next up, we have Fighter Maker. Yeah, uh, I got this one fairly recently, so I haven't actually played it yet. But it promises to allow you to make your own fighters in a fighting game. I've heard it's actually not so good, but we will see. It will be on a future pickup video. Make sure to check out the video game pickups on my channel. They will feature gameplay footage for every game included. There's the manual there. Hey Clive, welcome to the stream. Thanks for liking the video, my friend. Much appreciated. Good to have you here, buddy. How are you doing, my friend? All right, this case is also kind of broken, so I'm going to be very delicate with that. All right, we are on to one of my favorite game series of all time. Uh, first up, we have Final Fantasy Anthology. Uh, for this, it is Final Fantasy uh, 4 and 5, I believe, on this version. I'm going to take this out of the protective case. How many PS1 games have I got? I have uh, oh, somewhere over 100 at this point, which is about a 15th of the collection. PlayStation 2 is a lot bigger because PlayStation 2 games are really cheap these days, so I've been able to bulk up that collection a lot. I may well do other collection videos down the line, and PlayStation 2 would probably be one I'd have to skip over the games fairly quickly, but um, that is definitely a consideration as well. I believe you go, Final Fantasy Anthology. I'm not sure if in America, look at that cover art by the way, it looks amazing. I'm not sure if um, if in America 
Yeah, you have that one that's five and six. You see, this is what I wanted to say. Um, I'm not sure if in America you guys have different games on your Final Fantasy anthology. I think, I think we have different ones to you. Um, not sure, uh, but I'm pretty sure for us this is five and six because I have six separately, which I'm going to get to in a minute. Um, but there you go. So uh, there's Final Fantasy anthology, uh, and I know the American one has a soundtrack CD in as well. Uh, but there you go, learning from history. There's our Final Fantasies. The art looks different too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure um, this is four and five for us, anyway. And I'll open this up. Or it is five and six, and the other one is four Roman numerals. Um, there you go. There's the uh, first disc, and I actually originally found this missing a disc, but was able to get it and replace it. So that's pretty cool. You didn't get the soundtrack of yours, man. That's annoying because I know that um, I know that. Uh, the an, Amer an American version of this did have a soundtrack, and that would have been really cool. And and again, I have these uh, cases here, which is a pretty cool way to keep them safe. All right, and I could be wrong there. So I I think this is I think this is six, Final Fantasy six, uh, separate out over here, and this also has a demo disc of Final Fantasy ten in it. So near the end of the PlayStation one uh, life cycle, you got um, some games with demos of uh, PlayStation two games. Pretty cool. Learn from the past yet again. Pretty cool to get this. I liked to get uh, physical copies of all of the Final Fantasy games if I could. Uh, these discs not great looking. Black and white. Mm, don't like that. And there's the there's the demo as well. And of course I have the manual in here as well. And a little insert. We're about the instructions for the playable demo. How about that? Which is pretty cool. I like having the demos in there. Complete with the demos is pretty cool. The version you got uh, with four had uh, Chrono Trigger. Oh my goodness! Oh yeah, you guys, you guys did get a Chrono Trigger package, didn't you? That is awesome. Uh, Chrono Trigger didn't come out on the PlayStation over here. Um, <laughs> uh, Chrono Cross rather, and we didn't get Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo over here. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, do I play those old games? I definitely do. I definitely do. You can check out um, my latest video game pickups video, which includes gameplay footage from PlayStation One games. And I play games going all the way back to the uh, Atari 2600 and even the Commodore 64. <laughs> uh, next up we have Final Fantasy VII. One of my favorite games of all time. This is... Hey, Darren, how you doing my friend? Welcome to the stream, buddy. How you doing, buddy? This is in a platinum case. I uh, don't like the platinum cases, but... Um, you know, <laughs> good to have it. Um, I, it's definitely a more expensive game. It's definitely a more expensive game. So I don't wanna I don't really wanna upgrade to a black box version. You didn't get the number four with Chrono Trigger, but you uh did get the one with one and two. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the namings um over there were really confusing as well with the with the names of the games. I think over here in the in the seven disc game, no, no, it's it's a free disc game. <laughs> it's free disc, there aren't seven discs in here. Um I, I think we got Final Fantasy 1. Hey Gareth, thanks for the like my friend. Uh, I will also say that I have um, live streamed PlayStation 1 games as well. So I definitely, if, if anyone disbelieves that I still play games, you can see me live stream, <laughs> you can see me live stream them. Uh, I do play my games, I'm not a, I'm not a shelf collector. <laughs> I, I do play them. Uh, do I play it, my, them on a PS1 or a PS1 Lite, like a PS ONE? Um, I play all of my PlayStation 1 games on a PlayStation 2. And I currently um, either play them through RGB SCART uh, on my Sony uh, Trinitron CRT TV, or if I'm recording, I use the Pound HDMI cable on a flat screen. You have Final Fantasy VII and Tactics. You love FF Tactics. I think I've got Tactics on the PlayStation Portable, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I got this Platinum. Um, I I I want to upgrade to the Black Box version, but that would be really expensive. Um, I do have the disc in here. I think I might be missing the manual. There's a demo of Final Fantasy VIII in here as well, which is pretty cool. Hey, Jonan, how you doing, my friend? Welcome to the stream, buddy. But there are three discs in here and the demo for Final Fantasy VIII. All right, next up, Speak of the Devil, Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, this one, black box version as well. I must have over a thousand uh, games. <laughs> I currently have around about 1,500 or so games. Uh, there's actually in the description, 
There's a link to my Darkadia which has a full game list as well. Your copy of 7 doesn't have a demo for 8? Some of them won't. Um, also, like for Final Fantasy 8 actually, I have at least 3 copies of this. And I probably don't have four working discs between them. It's really annoying. These discs gum up. And on the subject of Final Fantasy VII as well, I will say if you guys don't have Final Fantasy VII and you want a legal way to play it very easily, the PlayStation Classic Mini, I know it's not, it's not very well reviewed, and I in fact reviewed it myself and didn't like it that much. If you want to get Final Fantasy VII, it's on that. And it's like $20 overseas in America or something right now. So if you want to play Final Fantasy VII legally, that's a really good way to do it, and you won't have to worry about the discs. Uh, but Final Fantasy VIII, awesome game, love this game. Final Fantasy VII was the first game since Mystic Quest and Final Fantasy I uh, that we got in, in the entire series over here in the UK. So we had, a, we had a big gap between getting any of them. We also got you know Mystic Quest on the Game Boy, but that's actually part of the Mana series. It's very confusing, even though it was called over in America Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, but I digress. <laughs> All right, let's check if I've got uh, the manual in here, and I do indeed. Interesting story about this actually, and I like that this is since it's not the platinum, you have artwork in here as well. Um, Chocobo Racer demo in here. There's the manual. There's uh, Renault on that disc. Uh, let's check out the other discs and see who's on those. Um, Sifra, I think he's called, and the the Evil Queen, I forget her name. All right, interesting thing. It's mentioned in the manual. That you'll be able to play like a chocobo mini game on this uh which you could never do that was a playstation pocket it was like a little um i want to say similar to those like um vmus from dreamcast you could have like a little pet chocobo and uh you could train it up that was included in this game and it actually is on this disc but you can't do it because the playstation pocket was never released over here you only own ff9 on disc jonin <gasps> The disc freezes in every cutscene. Yeah, that is a that is a problem. That happened to me a lot in Final Fantasy VIII. That's why I own like three different three different copies. You miss manuals and games, Clive. So do I, man. Because I forget controls all the time. Uh, I think during one of my streams of Knights of the Old Republic, uh, I went to my manual to look at the controls during it. <laughs> I like manuals. And speak of the devil, Final Fantasy IX is up next. Final Fantasy IX, fantastic game. Absolutely fantastic game. I haven't given this as much time as 7 or 8. I really do need to. I want to stream the Final Fantasies on the channel as well, actually, guys. I want to stream the games on the channel. Uh, I'm just concerned about copyright and the music. But there you go. Lovely artwork on this. Lovely artwork on these discs. Absolutely love it. I like the artwork on these discs uh, more than the in-game character designs, <laughs> I have to say. I think overseas they had different, uh, different, different artwork. We had the we had the black and white kind of similar to how they had in Japan. I think the placement on the PlayStation logo is different. It most likely is. Our cases are a completely different uh, size to your cases overseas as well. Uh, Final Fantasy IX, awesome game. Uh, next up, a Midway Classic. We have Gauntlet Legends. All right, this is in the classic version. I normally don't like to collect these kind of cases because I'm not sure if this had a regular case or not, but I found it really cheap. You have FF9 on the Switch, you need to finish it. That's fair, that's fair. Uh, I love Gauntlet. This isn't as good as the original, because it's 3D, it's it's fine, it's not terrible, but it's not that bad. Have I kept my games in mint condition? I have tried to, at my best, keep my games in mint condition. And I've had water damage to my uh, house, my roof, uh, multiple times. It's really hard, but that's one reason I like to get those protective cases I showed earlier. Um, the manual for this looks pretty nice. Artwork on both sides. And the disc isn't that bad either, even though it's not very colourful. But Gauntlet is a great game series. You guys have got to know and love Gauntlet, because I love Gauntlet. And next up, we have G-Police. Now, I may be confusing this with another game series, Future Cop LAPD. I may be. I had a demo for it at the time, and I absolutely loved. Um, but this certainly looks a lot like it. And I, it's not the same game. I think I'm thinking of Future Cop LAPD. So I got this because I thought it was that. It's not bad. It's a shooter. 3D. It's pretty cool. No manual in here. For some reason LH is written in permanent marker on the discs. I should say that one of my Final Fantasy VIII discs that no longer works, I wrote in permanent marker because I lent it to a friend at one point. I wrote my name on it. But there you go. And then as I had that one, 
I ha also have uh, G Police uh, Weapons of Justice as well, which someone's written, written OW on the front as well, like maybe pre-owned, I guess? It's a first person flight shooter, huh? What is insidious, I know, right? Yeah, it will get through the cracks in the case you are quite right, Cabot. It will, water finds a way, it always finds a way. Uh, these are pretty cool looking games. Um, but they're not Future Cop LAPD, and that's actually what I was looking for. Um, so I, I still need I still need to get a copy of Future Cop LAPD. But this is pretty cool, artwork on both sides of the manual. I like it, I'm going to skim over these games, because, like, we're an hour in, and I've only done, like, less than 50. <laughs> so let's keep going. Next up we have the Grand Theft Auto Collector's Edition. Ah, uh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Best played on the PC, but really good to have this edition. This is complete. The only thing I'm missing is there's an outer sleeve for the collector's edition. This includes Grand Theft Auto, uh, London Mission Pack 1969, and GTA 2. So how about that? Really awesome. Can you still buy PlayStation 1 new anywhere? You actually kind of can. I believe um, Squaresoft do like uh, reprints. They did, at least they did for a while because um, somebody told me about it. I think it was uh, Cactus316 told me that they were doing a sale, and I actually bought. It hasn't come over from the states yet because um, it's at it's at my family's house in America. Uh, but I actually bought Chrono uh, Chrono Trigger, or Chrono Cross. It would be for the PlayStation One, which I don't have because it never came out over here. Uh, so I got myself a new copy of that, uh, and that's going to be here at some point. So that'd be cool. And I do have, by the way, I do have an American PlayStation that I can play it on. So that'd be cool. You have the Greatest Hits version. They are green. Yeah, for you guys, they had green. For us, we had platinum, which was silver. I would have preferred to have green. All right, there's the first game. There's the manual. I think I have the map in here as well. I think this is complete. There's another manual. GTA 2 manual in there as well. There's another disc. And there's going to be tons of discs in here. Close this up. Oh no! <laughs> All right, the disc was put. It was, you know, there's gonna be a fair few of these that need to be repaired. All right, we have the London manual, and we have not one, not two, but three maps slash posters in here. So these will fold out. Oh, we, we've had two case casualties so far. Uh, is this unfolded or is this just much smaller? No, okay, it is. It is an unfolded. There we go. There's one side of the map. And there's the other. You don't like GTA 2. Yeah, some people don't like any of the um, of the originals, to be fair. To be fair, um, some people don't like the uh, top-down perspective. They prefer the 3D games. And that is fine. I still quite like them. But um, stuff like Vice City and GTA 3 were really, really good as well. Oop. All right. Here we go for uh, GTA 2. Speak of the devil. And they shall appear. There's a map for that. I like all these little inserts. I like having extras with my games. And then the London one. Alright, let's open this up. See, there's me saying I need to be faster. And then I'm showing you, like, all of the posters. <laughs> Don't mess, it says on the front of it. Pretty cool. I like how this one is uh, vertical instead of horizontal. And then my case felt a bit, so I'll fix that later. Anyway, uh, speak of the devil, GTA London. It is... Grand Theft Auto London. This is not the same game, guys. This isn't the same game. Uh, at least I don't think it is. 1969. No, it is. My bad. Um, there are there are two London mission packs. So this is 1969. This is mission pack one. There's another one. I don't have that one yet. So I'm missing one of them. Enjoy one back in the day, but it is hard to go back. Yeah, that's fair. After the uh, after the 3D ones came out. I hope GTA 6 is set in London. That would actually be pretty badass. Uh, but there you go. The mission pack for GTA uh, London. Nice to have a standalone copy of that. This one does not have any of the bells and whistles, because uh, I'm just missing them. But, you know, I like the flag on the disc. It's pretty nice. Put that aside. And since we're talking about uh, racing games, well, we kind of are. Let's segue into Gran Turismo and have a grand old time. DualShock compatible, of course. It even advertises that on the back of the case that it plays with a DualShock controller. Union Jack, yes sir. Is it Union Jack when it's only at sea? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> There's even an advertisement for the um, for the controller on the back there, and the manual is here as well. 
love this game cool racing game um racing games aren't always my jam but when they're done really well they're done really well i can't argue about that next up we have what sounds like an 80s metal band and that is grudge warriors yeah uh this is a, this is a vehicle combat game i got this very recently actually it was cheap it was like two or three pounds i couldn't complain at that so i picked it up and that was cool to have the disc art on this again really really meek disc art it looks pretty bad and there's the manual in there don't know anything about this one you have to check to see if you have Gran Turismo 1, you know I have it uh, 4 on the PS2. Yeah, I've probably got other Gran Turismo games around. Um, as a matter of fact guys, talking about picking up stuff recently, I have one or two pickups I can show at the end of the video as well, uh, including a PlayStation game. Alright, next up, we have Hard Edge from Sunsoft. Uh, this is a... I don't, it's not a survival horror, but it definitely plays like a Resident Evil game. It definitely, I would say it's more of a shooter. Uh, or, or an action game, but it has that kind of control with those games. It's pretty cool. Do I have Driver One? No, I don't have Driver One. Unfortunately, I have Driver Two. I have Driver Two. We came, we went across it previously. <laughs> the Edge. Uh, this has a different name overseas. I don't recall. Wikipedia will tell you what it is. Uh, but this game has a different title overseas. I don't know what it is. Uh, but there you go. It's actually a really cool game. It's really cool. I haven't had the time to play it that much, but it's really nice. You have Driver 2 also, Cabot, awesome. It's a pretty cool game. Driver Driver 2, I kind of struggled with a little bit. Um, but then again, driving games aren't necessarily my forte. I much prefer shooting stuff. Um, next up, we have the best of Infogames adventure version of Heart of Darkness. This one includes 3D glasses. Um, so I actually was going to pick up a non uh, best of version of this with like a proper cover a while ago, but it was missing one of the discs. Uh, this one is complete. Driver 2 is brilliant. Probably a pretty cool game. I need to give it more time. Uh, this is a really cool game though. Uh, one of the reasons why I picked up this version is it does come with the uh, it does come with the 3D glasses. They are uh, actually in here and they're still on the paper. So check that out. Oh, I'm looking at the chat in 3D, guys! Whoa! <laughs> My nose doesn't even flip through that. <laughs> um, the discs, however, look really nasty. Really nasty. Uh, the manual is, is there, though. And there you go. Pretty cool to have that. You know, um, one of the um, one of the uh, Freddy Krueger films came with 3D glasses as well. Um, I can't remember which one. One of the Nightmare on Elm Street films. But I lost those. Uh, man, that just a second of wearing those glasses gave me a bit of a headache. <laughs> um, so is it um, Proto 3DS? <laughs> yes, Jonin, yes it is. Um, talking about hybrid software, uh, well, we kind of aren't, but I need, I need a segue to hybrid for the PlayStation 1. Again, I said for the PlayStation 1, sorry, autopilot for my video game pickups. And if you guys want to check out my video game pickups, they have gameplay for every game on them. So you do check those out on the channel. Uh, one of them will be the feature video on the channel. This is a first person shooter. It's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. It's a first person shooter. Game I don't know anything about. It's a pocket price Midas game, which I spoke of previously as being a kind of value game. Um, I don't believe this to have been released over here outside of this. And I believe this game to have potentially had a different name elsewhere because... I don't know anything about this. I know nothing about this game. I can't find much info about it except that it's a shooter called Hybrid. It's pretty cool. Old school 3D red and blue classic lenses. I know, right? I mean, back in the day, used to used to see films and stuff like that, and it was crazy. Um, next up, we have In Cold Blood. I love my survival horror games. You know that, guys. You see me stream Resident Evil all the time. Love survival horror. This is a pretty cool game. Don't love it as much as Resident Evil. I have to be completely honest about that. But it's still a pretty cool game. Uh, the disc art is very nice. And I have the manual included as well. It's nice to have that. If I can get copies that are complete, I will definitely do so. Look at that, an advertisement for the DualShock controller as well. With uh, some crazy guy's face on it. How about that? Alright, next up we have one of my favorites i've said that before but that's because it's one of my favorites there are many favorites but one of my favorites definitely 
definitely a hidden gem that you might not have heard about it. Was SWAT on PS1 or PS2? I want to say it was PS1 because I might have it. We shall we shall see when we get down to the uh, when we get down to the S's. Um, but yeah, it was probably I believe that was a shooter. Um, but, but this game, guys, this game is one of my favorites, and it is a hidden gem. It is Jade Cocoon, and guys, you want to take the best things out of a role-playing game and pokemon you get j cocoon this is like final fantasy meets pokemon this is awesome this game is actually amazing nobody talks about this game i don't know why it's really good you can make your own creatures as well you can sort of combine elements uh, it says on the back an amazing epic adventure and that is correct uh, one that i absolutely loved i could only play it on demo disc back in the day i only had a demo uh, a while ago i picked it up physically man such a good game nobody talks about it nobody talks about it it's so good it's so good <laughs> did dualshock come out in 1998 i have no idea <laughs> you think swap was ps2 huh i probably don't have it if it's ps2 then uh there you go there's the disc art and there's the uh there's the manual this did have a sequel on the ps2 uh, which was a little more anime. It was a little, a little, a little more complicated. They made the game more complicated. I think the PlayStation One version is better. Uh, so if you haven't heard about this game, guys, this is a great game. Go pick it up. Like, cause man, it, it goes unsung. And you know what, guys? I was, uh, I was thinking of doing uh, hidden gem videos live at some point as well, in the same manner that I did my top ten pickups. So if I did that, I would probably show gameplay footage of like if I did PlayStation One hidden gems. I would do a couple of games and I'd show gameplay footage of all of them. That would be pretty cool. Uh, next up we have Tensai the Sacred Fist. It's a generic fighting game. Uh, there are a lot of these on the PlayStation. I don't believe this one was particularly remarkable. Uh, maybe some of you have some more experience of this game. Um, but I, I had this game. I definitely had it. It wasn't... I think the problem I had is that I just really liked Tekken. And it wasn't Tekken. Um, so... It's not going to show up very well because of the plastic case, but has some interesting characters. Uh, but other than that, not as good as Tekken. Play Tekken. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. Hidden gems is a cool idea. I know, right? Yeah, I'm going to do some. I'm definitely going to do some hidden gems down the line at some point. There's other things I want to do as well, like more collection videos, and um, I definitely want to do. Um, I definitely want to do a live game room tour, but I'm still figuring that out. How I'm going to do that? Probably with a with a phone, I'm guessing. But then I'm not sure how I'm going to get the audio. <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm going to read the chat. I'm still figuring that out. But it's going to happen at some point. Do I, did I play those games back in the day? I didn't play all of these back in the day. But some of them I did. Um, Kensai, I believe, was a game I picked up relatively cheaply back in the day. And I just probably haven't played that much since. Because it wasn't as good as Tekken. <laughs> hey, finish this. How are you doing, my friend? Welcome to the stream, my friend. Good to have you here. Cover reminds you of a different game called Fighting Force, huh? Ah, uh, Fighting Force. I think I, I think I have Fighting Force on the Dreamcast. Hey, thanks for the like. Finish this, man. Much appreciated, my friend. Glad to have you here. Here's another survival horror. It is Kudelka. This is a really cool one. Uh, this actually has turn-based combat, akin to um, akin to uh, Final Fantasy. So this is like a mixture of survival horror and role-playing, which is pretty cool. It's a horror game. I love it. Uh, it's got a really unique look to it. And it's awesome to have this in a collection. Uh, inside of here, I have the manual and the discs. Love having them complete. Awesome to have the... Oh my goodness, the disc is falling out. This is a problem. So this is a problem with these cases, these ones in particular, that hold the, that hold the disc with these little prongs. Uh, they, I mean, this little bit of plastic, they break really easily, the discs fall out, oh my goodness. You've been playing Witcher 3 Wild Hunt? That is a cool game, they've done a, um, they've done a uh, Game of the Year edition of that, which I want to pick up actually. I've got the uh, Witcher 3 on, um, on PlayStation 4, no sorry, on Xbox One, it comes with a soundtrack, but I want it on the PlayStation 4, because I play the PlayStation 4 more, so uh, that's kind of the copy I want to pick up. Witcher 3 is a masterpiece. It really is a really cool game. Alright, next up. This is a game I had for on demo for the longest time. You've had the uh, game of the year for ages. 
yeah, I want to pick it up. I really do. I also want to get the um, updated version of Resident Evil 7. Uh, Gold Edition, I think. There's so many games I want to pick up. But new games are expensive. That's why I have so many old games. Uh, this game I had on demo for the longest time. And it is uh, Soul Reaver Legacy of uh, Kane. And uh, you guys might not be able to tell, but this is a 3D cover. Uh, probably can't. Oh, you might be able to. You might be able to tell that he's 3D. He moves around a little bit. Really, really cool. Want to see the net the Witch on Netflix? Yeah, I heard that's coming soon. Sounds pretty cool. This is a really good game. You guys probably know this is a classic. You know about this game. Oh my goodness, these cases. Come on. <laughs> All right. There's, there's the manual, and also in here I have um, a little extra piece of information, which is pretty cool, advertising some games, no doubt, including, you spoke about it earlier, Fighting Force, Fighting Force 2 is advertised there, and uh, Soul Reaver, a little bit of uh, paperwork, and the disc, actually pretty nice artwork for the disc as well. Alright, oh and look at that, an advertisement for Fear Effect, we went past that earlier. Currently playing the uh, Game of the Year edition. I want to pick that up. It looks really cool. <laughs> There's so much nudity in the game. <laughs> That'll definitely sell it to some people. That'll definitely sell it to some people. Alright. Okay, I'm going to fix that case later. Next up, we're going to move on to Life Force Tanker. Alright. This is an interesting game. It is a first person shooter. I don't believe this one to be that great, uh, but it's definitely it's definitely a game that I have in my collection. Um, I picked up a lot of games like this, not knowing much about them, uh, but it, it's not terrible. I can't say it's terrible. It's just there's probably a reason you haven't heard of it. Life Force Tanker. It's not as good as Life Force on the NES, or as we call it, Salamander over here. You got the Game of the Year edition as well. I know, right? I really want to pick it up. Oh. Oh my goodness, this case does not want to close. There we go. There we go. Next up. It is Loaded. And this is a really cool game. Horror game. Absolutely love it. I believe I picked this up from Camborn Games. And um, they sold it to me reduced because they thought it was missing a disc. And um, Remember what I said earlier, guys, about these cases? Not necessarily having more than one disc in. If you look closely, you can see it doesn't want to focus, but it only it only has one disc. It's only a one disc game. The guy thought it was missing a disc. He gave me a discount. Um, there's space for extra discs. There's just only one disc in here. There's no manual, so that's fine. But only a one disc game. You got it for thirty five euros. Yeah, I, I, I just want to get it real cheap, so I'm just waiting. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. I, I pick up most of my games so cheap. So cheap. Like, I pick up maybe, like, one or two new games uh, in my video game pickups. But most of what I pick up is, is uh, retro, so I get it. I get it on... Uh, I get them in charity shops and places like that. I tend to, I tend to save uh, new games so they go down a bit, because they will. They will go down. Hey, thanks for being here, Finish It Man. Appreciate, appreciate you stopping by, my friend, and I appreciate the like. Next up is Lone Soldier, and this game is not good. This is a run and gun shooter. It is, oh my goodness, it is not great. I remember um, I was recording gameplay footage of this on my slim PlayStation 2, and I was playing this and another game, and uh, the other game, the slim PS2 has a problem where it can scratch discs, the other disc got scratched up, and I was like so mad because I wanted the disc to scratch up to have been this game that I played just before it. It's not good. Hey, Mr. No Life, welcome to the stream, my friend. How are you doing, buddy? It's a run gun shooter, but it is really, really bad. It is really bad. You can see gameplay footage of it on one of my pickups way back. But it is, oh my goodness. This is one I don't mind the case being broken for. I've got the manual, and I've got, look at that, look at that. You know when a disc is, a game is bad because they have put no effort into the artwork on the, on the front of it whatsoever. Hey. hey, no worries, Clive. Thanks for being here, buddy, and I'll catch you next time. Good to have you here, my friend, and I'll see you later, buddy. Next up, we have a uh, point-and-click adventure game, and it is Louvre, The Final Curse. 
And this is this is not that bad. Uh, often you might think of point and click games to be a little boring. I actually quite like them. I'm used to playing them on the PC. This is actually pretty good. There is a lot of cutscenes on this game. It has a really, really crazy and far-fetched story. Um, but you know what? It's actually not that bad. It's not so bad. Uh, in here, have the discs and the manual. Both discs and the manual of that. So how about that? All right. Next up, we have another survival horror game, and it is Martian Gothic. Look at that cover. Does that remind you of uh, a film? What's that film? Um, is it Jason Statham? He's on Mars? I can't remember the name of it. Someone will know. Um, Unification is the subtitle of this game. Um, pretty cool game. Uh, survival horror. Got a kind of a, I want to say a dead space feel. But it's pretty cool. A lot of adventure games have steady plots. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter so much. Um, I actually saw a ton of adventure games in a charity shop for like 50 pence each, uh, PC games, but they were like, they were so left field, if you know what I mean. They were like clearly games that were made on a massive budget, which doesn't necessarily mean they were bad. It's just like, you know, I didn't want to take a risk on them. I like the artwork on the disc there. Same on the back of the manual. Survival horror game, pretty cool one. I like to have that. All right, next up, we have a very, very popular game. The Martian with Matt Damon? Maybe. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I can't remember the name. I can't remember. The Martian? Maybe it was The Martian with Matt Damon. I don't remember Matt Damon being in it, but I don't remember much of the film. <laughs> that is true, guys. You, you will not know what I'm talking about because it is in my head. <laughs> Hey, thank you for subscribing, Marek. Much appreciated, my friend. Thanks for joining me. This game is bound to be well known, unlike whatever film I'm thinking of. Um, actually, you know, this might help, actually. In the film, I'm sure there were, there were monsters that disfigured themselves. That might help. That might help. <laughs> uh, Metal Gear Solid. I'm sure many of you guys are a big fan of this game. Metal Gear Solid. Um... From Konami before they lost their minds. <laughs> uh, it's a stealth game. You guys know I'm not always a big fan of stealth games. Uh, but having to have this in my collection. The original had it back in the day. I've never been fantastic at this game. And look at that. The case is broken. Uh, like the disc art. Like the manual art, I like a lot about this one. Metal Gear Solid, never heard of it. I know, right, Cabot, it's really obscure. There's, there's a sticker I've forgotten to remove at some point, so I must have got this second hand of, of this side of the case. Oh my goodness. And, and there's the second disc. Let's look at this two disc game. Let me double check. Just two, one of two. Yeah, two discs. Even though there's space for four in here. All right, is this gonna, is this gonna want to come back together, or am I gonna put it on my increasing pile of dead cases to my, to my right? There we go. I have actually now a stack of dead cases so far, which I'm gonna have to fix. Um, but what else do you want if you have Metal Gear Solid? What you're gonna want is Metal Gear Solid, the special mission disc. So I have MDK. Um, man, I actually don't have MDK, but I've seen it a lot. I've seen it a lot. Um, but how are you doing, uh, Marek? Good to see you, my friend. I've seen it around a lot, and now I'm trying to think if I had it on the Dreamcast instead, but I can't remember. My full game list is in the description uh, from the Darkadia link as well, so you can check that out. Metal Gear Solid Special Missions. There was, uh, there was a version of this that came with uh, both of these games. I'll lift up the bit of the case that's still there. There was a version that came with both of them together, but uh, I had to get them separately. I also have the remake of this. On the uh, on the uh, GameCube, uh, but yeah, pretty cool to get this special missions, more VR missions. I believe they're called VR missions overseas. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it is it full of VR missions? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. I think this is a disc of VR missions, and that is exactly what it is. Don't break case. But well, there you go. Nice to have it. Uh, not sure how many discs are in here. Certainly none there. Let's open up the side of this. Oh. And uh, we have, is this only one disc? Yeah, this is only one disc. That's kind of funny. We have another Konami booklet as well. Let's see what it's advertising. Let's see what games it's advertising. 
Oh no, it's just a, it's just a booklet, but it's in it's in full color. That's interesting. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like it when they go the extra mile and make the booklet in full color because not a lot of time they will actually do that. They will cheap out on it. All right, next up, guys. It was called VR missions there. Ah, I suspected as much. Cool. Uh, next up, we have Micromaniacs. This is an offshoot of the Micro Machine games, I believe, and I believe because it's by Codemasters. I picked this up very recently, so I haven't played this yet, but it will be on a future pickup video. It uh, looks like a really interesting game. I got it for about £2 in Acorn Records in Truro. I still remember that. Uh, which is where I saw MDK, actually. Um, so I, I can pick that up. And I, you know, I kind of thought that I had it, or the sequel already, but I'm not sh too sure. But uh, there, this actually looks like a pretty interesting game. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Part of a bestseller series. And the disc art is a little, a little underwhelming, but still pretty cool to have that. Alright. Next up, uh, talking about artwork being a little underwhelming. This game is very deceptive. And it is... Mobile Light Force. Okay, so you're thinking, what the hell, MVL? That looks like some kind of um, Charlie's Angels style game. What's going on? This is not the game you're looking at. This is some crazy uh, European localization of this. This game was released in Japan. Um, I, I want to say, could be wrong. Um, check out whatever video I originally talked about it previously, but I'm pretty sure this is Castle Shikigami. Uh, it is a Japanese shooting game. It is really good, but this is the only version we got over here and It was repackaged the title screen has been butchered to have this artwork This this bears no relevance to the game whatsoever But this is the European version of it, and that's what we got so uh, it is a really cool uh, Space shooter. It's a 2d game. It's a 2d shooter. The artwork has just been changed. It's actually pretty cool Hey Ash, how you doing my friend? I do not believe I have that game, but um, I could probably look into it. There's so many games I want to check out. False advertising? I know, right? <laughs> uh, but it is actually a really good game. So if you're in the power region and you see Mobile Light Force, it's actually a really good, I would say, hidden gem. Um, Space Shooter is really good. All right, next up we have N2O, Nitrogen 2 Oxide. Um, this is a really kind of psychedelic um, racing shooter, you're kind of going down a tunnel. It's a really weird game. It's incredibly colorful. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to play this game if you've got a problem with strobing lights. I'll tell you that it is a really crazy looking game. And how are you doing, Ash? By the way, welcome to the stream, my friend. Um, and this is actually a pretty cool game. N two O. And with another game. Oh my goodness, my stacks of games are gonna crumble. No. All right, there we go. Stacking up all the games to my right in not so organized paths. Another game, another game with uh with a very odd title. <laughs> it's an awesome game, but quite expensive. Now, isn't that the way? Always the way with games that are really good, they get very expensive. I am chipping away at expensive games. Sometimes I can find them. Um, the soundtrack was done by Crystal Method. That's pretty cool. Uh, sometimes I can find expensive games in charity shops are really cheap. Um, sometimes I bite the bullet, like I did with uh, Castlevania Bloodlines. Um, but yeah, I'm chipping away at them. I'm chipping away at them. Uh, ODT. Uh, I can't remember the name of this game. It's, uh, does it say underneath? Um, it's a third-person shooter. It's not that bad, actually. Kind of got platforming elements as well. Um, but there you go. It's not a bad game. Not a bad game at all. It's not a fantastic game, but I wouldn't say it's bad. You can put the disc in a CD player and listen to it. That's pretty cool. I like that the PlayStation had the option to be a CD player as well, in the same way the Sega CD did. Uh, I like the uh, I like the disc art there as well. Uh, sorry, the manual art, I should say. And uh, there you go. I think I think it's um, Escape, and the ODT is All Die Trying. I think that's it. Escape or Die Trying. I think that's the reason for that name. All right, a game that we all know very well. Absolute classic. Abe's Odyssey. Oddworld. Absolute classic. Of course I have this in my collection. I may be missing some of the um some of the mainstays, but I do have this one. Awesome game. Absolutely love it. Some of the most fun things you can do in this game 
is just to press random buttons and make random noises and random phrases. Used used a lot of the uh, controls of the controller to say different things. And oh my goodness, you could make fart noises, uh, loads of silly stuff. It is a, it is a classic indeed. You have uh, 20 PS1 games and 30 PS2 games. It is great having physical copies of classics. Still so many classics I need to pick up. Glad I have this one in my collection. I love this game. And if you want to pick up classics, file on me. I can't do the voice. And I'm not going to make a fart noise. Uh, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, on World Able Z. I love the disc art as well. Love the disc art. Some of the later games in the series, not so great. There was one on the original Xbox I was playing with just gosh awful controls. Uh, but this one, love it. Side scrolling, love it. Didn't translate so well to 3D. Uh, next up, Overboard. I believe this game is called Shipwreckers Overseas. Um, so when you play this game, you've got to be careful not to get your ship wrecked. Um, I didn't swear there. You can roll back the tape. PS1 box is a flimsy. You're telling me I have a pile. Uh, whilst I've been showing you, you these games, guys, I have a pile of broken cases. Uh, just opening them up to show you them through this video. So don't say I do nothing for you. Take no risks. Uh, there we go. Overboard. Or Shipwreckers. Gotta be careful not to get your ship wrecked. Um, actually a really cool game. A boat combat game. Tomorrow Never Dies uh, on the PS1. <laughs> yeah, some of some of the uh, 007 games were not so bad. Um, Nightfire, I actually really like Nightfire. I mean, GoldenEye is, is the best. No one's going to dispute GoldenEye is the best 007 game. It's so good. Uh, I know a lot of people aren't, aren't a big fan of the N64 controller. I actually really like the N64 controller, uh, but that's because I'm quite used to it. Uh, but certainly I would take any any alternative, which is why I have Wavebow controllers as well. Um, Alright, or well, I should say different shapes. I don't know if they're official Wavebow, but you get the, you get the idea. Alright, next up. Um, Pax Corpus. And you know guys, I do have some duds in the collection. This is certainly it. Possibly one of the worst games in my collection. Honestly, not good. It's, you know, again, I might be being too harsh. This game is not that bad. I've certainly played worse. You know, Stephen King's F13 over there on the PC. That's worse. That is probably one of my worst games. But this is certainly not a good game. You know, I like the artwork, I like the art style. I like um, this kind of, I don't know, Blade Runner style uh, gimmick they've got going on. But no, no, the game is not good. Probably a reason you haven't heard of it. Um, next up, another game you might not have heard of, it's not that bad, is Pitfall 3D. Yeah. Hey, CM Retro, you love PS1? Good to have you here. Is it as bad as Desert Bus? Not as bad as Desert Bus, because it's actually a game. I don't know if I would call Desert Bus a game. <laughs> uh, Beyond the Jungle. Crisis is one of your favourite duds. <laughs> There are some actually, there are some games that are so bad that they're good. That is true. That is true. You know, I uh, a game I've been playing recently is Alone in the Dark on the Xbox 360, and it is not as good as the other uh, Alone in the Dark games. I actually did a Patreon video about it, and I've been playing it so much I kind of, you know, made myself like it. Uh, but in that game, you're climbing electrical cable and putting out fires, which is not what you want to be doing in a survival horror game. Um, this game features the voice of Bruce Campbell. As Pit for Harry. Big Rigs. <laughs> it's so bad it's good. <laughs> I still probably wouldn't play Big Rigs. But it is funny. Um, got the manual here. And got the disc. Not good artwork on, on that disc. And the insert's coming out. Man, I hate how the inserts always come out of these things. You guys get that problem? Uh, this is a slightly broken case, but not as broken as some of the ones in front of me. Alright. Next up. Oh my goodness, I smashed the case a little bit. Smash the case. All right, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. Next up, we have Rayman, another classic. That's why right, Bruce Campbell is Pitfall Harry in that game. That is true. I relate. This is an absolute classic. You can't dispute that. Awesome side scroller. I think Shadow the Hedgehog is so bad. It's a good game. That that is a good candidate, Jonin, for sure. I've uh, got the manual here and the disc. 
It's a good game. I was late to the party with this, um, but I did end up picking up myself a copy of Rayman. And not just that, but if you're going to have Rayman, you've got to also have Rayman 2, The Great Escape. Another really good game. I also have Rayman on the Game Boy, uh, but it's not as good. It's like missing stuff, but it's still cool. Bruce Campbell is a legend. He is indeed. He is indeed. Uh, I remember an April Fool's where he put up a picture of himself as uh, as being the next Doctor in Doctor Who. And it was like so convincing. And honestly, I was like, yes, please, Bruce Campbell as, uh, as the Doctor. That would be awesome. Next up. One of my favourite games of all time. Just going to put it out there. Resident Evil. Love it. Ugly case. This is a platinum case. Silver. Silver on the side. Not a good looking case. Not the best version of this game as well. I've spoken about this before. That we got a cut down version over here. I'll explain that more when I go on to the next game. Um, the cover art is also pretty bad. Like that gun isn't even in the game. Um, I forget which character this is supposed to be. I've said before. Um. I think this is the guy that dies from the snake, but then other people have said it's supposed to be uh, one of the main characters, so who knows. Um, but it's a good game. It is a good game. Shadow, this hedgehog is so damn edgy. Eh. You guys know this is a classic. Ugly platinum disc in there, no artwork on it, it's so hideous. You got RE on the Dreamcast? I don't have it on the Dreamcast, but that would be a great version to have. I am running out of space for these. Next up. It is... Another copy of Resident Evil, but why MVL? But why another copy of Resident Evil? Because I got this one afterwards, because it was released afterwards. And this is Resident Evil Director's Cut. Now this gets even more confusing if you're American. I'm not American. But there is another version in America, Resident Evil Director's Cut DualShock, which allows the use of the DualShock controller. But you don't want to get that version because the music has been changed and it's awful. So don't get the DualShock version. Get the Director's Cut. You thought Resident Evil uh, was about you visiting your in-laws? Ah. Siphon Filter. Siphon Filter will be on the list. It's down in the Esters. We're very close to it, my friend. Good to have you here. Nick. Director's Cut. It has a demo of Resident Evil 2. Now, something really, really annoying happened with the release of this. I often talk about censorship due to Germans having a more harsh censorship than we have over here in the UK. We were supposed to get this... With the opening cutscene in full colour and uncut. We ended up getting the uh, cutscene in black and white. Gabe Logan rules. He does indeed. Uh, we ended up getting the opening cutscene in black and white and cut down. Very disappointing. Guess who got the uncut version? Germany! Who weren't supposed to get the uncut version. They are supposed to get the cut version. Colossal screw up. This was back in the day before they could patch it. They didn't release new discs. It will always be the case. That the UK version, which was supposed to be completely uncut, is not uncut. Oh my goodness, it's so annoying, but what are you going to do? I, so I actually do want to get the German version of this. Because uh, the text is kind of irrelevant anyway. But I want to get a German copy. Um, nice artwork on this. This is, other than that, there is uh, extra modes on this and everything. That was a screw up, I know right, Jernim. Uh, you got the demo of Resident Evil 2, and you got the main disc in there, and you got the manual. Um, a German version I would like, or a PC. The PC version, there is an uncut version on the PC, but it's really awkward to make it run correctly on the PC. Alright, next up, another favourite. And I don't often say that I like a sequel more than the first game, but I think in the case of um, when you came to films, I guess Aliens, I kind of like that more than Alien. Uh, which is very weird to say that, isn't it? It's always weird to say that. Uh, the add white, black and white adds a B movie vibe. I know I actually, I actually do really like it, but when I found out, it, uh, you know, down the line when I found out we could have got it in color, I was kind of mad because it would have had more gore to it as well. Same thing happened there. I know, I know you guys got it centered as well, uh, but I, again, I think America was a little more strict than we were in the UK. We were supposed to get it uncut. I don't think you guys were supposed to get it uncut. But correct me if I'm wrong, but the, there is a there is a PC version that is uncut in the UK, but it's really rare really expensive and it's hard to make it run but anyway resident evil 2 oh oh you guys know i love this game 
Um, you see me stream it a lot actually. I've streamed it a lot, mostly on the GameCube because the GameCube version looks better. Um, but yeah, Empire Strikes Back is another sequel that you think is better than the original. That that is fair. That is fair. Can you survive the horror? Ugh. I mean, what can I say about this game that I haven't already said before? I love this game. Hey, beautiful shadow, welcome. One of the most epic collections you've seen. <laughs> thanks. Foams in the mouth. Why, thank you. We have a lot of good stuff coming up as well. We're we're like two thirds of the way through. We still got so many games, guys. I was I was planning to go for two hours, but we we are we are going to be going. We're going to be going. <laughs> There you go, Resident Evil 2. How are you doing, uh, beautiful shadow? Welcome. Welcome. When you guys can see the, the piles uh, stacking up next to me as I go. Look, look at this, look at this. These are just the ones we've already been through. These are just the ones we've already been through. And I, I, suppose, I suppose Notable as well was, uh, was an Avenged Sevenfold uh, guitarist on my door. Don't so much care for Avenged Sevenfold music, but he looks kind of hot. Um, <laughs> next up, <laughs> next up, I'm not saying I hate Avenged Sevenfold music, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Resident Evil, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, let me, let me take myself out of this hole with another game. Alright, <laughs> uh, I'm the Energizer Bunny that gets just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> how are you doing, Shadow? I, <laughs> I said hi, how are you doing? Um... That Nemesis uh, uses Joel from the first game. Really cool. I'm a, I'm a legend. Why, well, thank you. Thank you, Shadow. But you give me too much praise. You give me too much praise. Especially when I say things like I just said a minute ago. <laughs> so many games. I know, right? Don't have the manual for this one. We need to get to this one at some point. And, you know, you've got to excuse what I say. Because I am sweating like a maniac right now. It's so hot and the computer doesn't help. I just prefer classic 80s metal. I'm not saying I hate Avenged Sevenfold music. <laughs> but Dino Crisis, yeah I do. We went past Dino Crisis. I, I'm in alphabetical order, so we should be moving on to um, what has been requested actually, Siphon Filter, pretty soon. Um, your favourite games are Godfather 2, uh, Uncharted 3, Red Dead 2. Red Dead 2 is pretty cool. The, the problem I have with Red Dead 2 is that it is like really really slow <laughs> spider-man 3 spider-man 3 was on the ps2 correct me if i'm wrong that's a pretty cool game resident evil survivor oh guys i gotta talk about this i gotta talk about this oh resident evil survivor so i mean how much can i hate avenge seven world music if i have him on my door all right let me just get off that let me get off that and get off that whole subject. Talk about, talk about, talk about Dino Crisis. Dino Crisis? Resident Evil Survivor. Guys, guys, come on. <laughs> Alright, let me, uh, let me move this up a little bit, because I am slightly out of view. Alright. I'm going crazy. Resident Evil Survivor. And it is a really, really cool game. Crash Bandicoot. I don't have a copy of Crash Bandicoot. So my Crash Bandicoot, I have the case, but I'm missing the disc. Really unfortunate. Crash Team Racing. Oh, guys, I I was given uh, I was given the opportunity to have a copy of Crash Team uh, Crash Racing on the PlayStation One, and I thought and uh, I thought to myself, it it's like what a couple of quid game. I was I was being I was being all nice because I'm a nice guy. And I was like, no, no, it's fine. I, you know, you know, keep it, keep it, you know. And then I found out Crash Racing is like a, a 40 quid, like 60 quid ish game on the PlayStation 1. Come on. Oh my goodness. I made such a mistake. Oh my goodness. The AVGN episode of Resident Evil Survivor is hilarious. I know, right? Um, actually, guys, I really like this game. I really like this game. And I like this game because in the UK... And I believe only in the UK you could play this with a light gun. Pew pew! You could play it with a light gun, and that is the reason I quite like this. I love light gun games, so it's great to have this in the collection. And it's actually not that bad a game. It's really short. At least I have the case. Yeah, I'll get I'll get a replacement disc at some point. Getting a replacement disc will be cheaper than uh, fixing the whole thing. You love CRT? Yeah, you need a CRT to play light gun games. Fortunately, I still have a CRT. 
I downsized my CRT, but I still have one. You don't know what happened to yours. It's a pretty big thing to go missing. Alright. Next up, we have uh, another point and click game. It is Riven, the sequel to Myst. Obviously, I don't have Myst, uh, but I have, it, I have Myst on different platforms. I think I have it on maybe the 3DO or PC. I can't remember, but I have, I have Myst. Hey, thanks, Nick. Much appreciate, my friend. You guys are awesome for being here, my friends. It is a point and click adventure game. Not a lot to say about this one, really. These point and click games, um, they can sometimes take a little while to get into. Crash Team Racing. Yeah, I want to pick it up. There's a PS4 version now, isn't there? There's a PS4 version of that. Oh, lost the disc. This is a multiple disc game. It's got that problem again where some of the um, some of the bits of plastic aren't holding in the, the disc correctly. So they come out a little bit, but there you go. Oh, oh close correctly. All right, next up. Next up, we have Ronin Blade. This is actually a pretty cool game. I would describe this uh, as a hack and slash. Hey, no worries, Mr. No Life. Good to have you here, my friend. And I will catch you later, buddy. This is a hack and slash. Good to have this in the collection. You can use elements of stealth as well. Kind of reminds me of the... Um, I forget the name is I forget the name of the series now. Um, oh my goodness, there's another ninja game, and I'm I'm silly for forgetting the name of it. We might even come. You know what? We're gonna come. Tenchu. There we go. I'm looking at my collection. Tenchu. Do I have Medieval? Ugh, I don't have Medieval. I used to have it on demo disc, and I played it on demo disc all the time. I have Medieval on the uh, PlayStation Portable, but I don't currently have it on the PlayStation One. But I do want it. Next up. Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden is a really good series of games. Um, I love Ninja Gaiden on the uh, NES and Master System. Another stealth game like Metal Gear Solid. It's pretty cool. I think the, the thing I like about the... Um, we'll get to it when I talk about the Tenchu series. Um, is that you, you don't have to stealth. You can get away with not stealthing and I like that. Uh, next up we have San Vien, another Another value series. Yeah, Medieval and Medieval 2, they're great games. They're absolutely great games, and I, I want to get them again. I want to pick them up. Um, overseas, this is known as Shooter San Vien. Um, other than that, it's a shooter. What what can you say about it? It's a, it's an okay shooter. It is worth the, the pocket price that you might pay for it. You've got the manual in there. The case doesn't look great, but other than that, at least it's not broken. Amazing games, they are amazing games, I know. I gotta pick them up, I gotta pick them up. Next up, we have Shaolin. And if you wanna see gameplay footage for this, this was on my most recent pickup video. It's the featured video uh, on my channel for returning subscribers currently. Uh, other than that, it will be uh, in the July video game pickups on my channel. Uh, there'll be gameplay footage for this. This is a role playing game slash fighting game. It's actually pretty cool. I got this in Plymouth, I forget the name of the shop now, um, but you can actually check that out. Um, if it's up yet, I can't remember, honestly guys, I've forgotten everything. <laughs> uh, no manual though. Hey Johnny, welcome to the stream my friend. You're shocked and impressed, I'm glad to have you here my friend. <laughs> How you doing buddy? Welcome, welcome. Reservate FF7. I think even one and two, the first four Tomb Raider games are your faves. I know, right? I'm missing a bunch of Tomb Raider games. Legend of Dragoon. All right, next up we have Silent Bomber. I believe this was also, I believe this was also on my most recent pickup video. So you can see footage for this. This is a really cool game. Role playing game, kind of like an edgy Bomberman. Like an edgy Bomberman. It's a really, really good game. It's got a really dark story to it. And I really like this game. Pretty cool. All these PS1 games takes you back. I know, right? That's the good thing about physical media. It's not going anywhere. Your digital media, your digital media, they can take it away from you. But your physical media, you own that. Unless someone, of course, t literally takes away from you. Alright, guys. 
another another classic. We got another classic coming up that'll be on many of you guys' top game lists. Certainly, certainly on my top game list. It is Silent Hill on the PlayStation One. Oh, the nostalgia! Yep, yeah. this game's becoming a bit expensive these days. This is becoming a bit expensive these days. Open this up out of my protective case. I want to get these cases for all of my games if I can. Slowly getting around to it. On my um, Super Nintendo uh, boxed games and stuff. I definitely have them. Getting them. You're great. That's good to hear Johnny. I'm glad. I'm doing well my friend. We've certainly got a bunch of PlayStation games still to come. Awesome to have you here my friend. Silent Hill. Wonderful, wonderful game. Absolutely love it. This is one of those games that really uh, put me put me through a loop. It put me through a loop, guys. Firms in the mouth again. Huh? You want to get that checked? <laughs> you could be turning into a monster from Silent Hill. Um, one of these games where you have to die at the, near the start, and that confused me. So I think the first time I played this, I got killed by these little baby monsters, and then stopped playing. Um, you've got to you got to kill those. You got to let yourself get killed by little baby monsters. <laughs> There's so much so much stuff. Hey, video game lover, how you doing, my friend? Welcome to the stream. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. All right, next up, we have oh, total hidden gem, total hidden gem, space debris. All right, guys, there's not a lot of information about this game. I think it might have been power region only. Um, but this is a really cool game. That's fine, Johnny. Some people like certain games. Some people don't like certain games. Alright. This is a really, really good game. It's like an on-rail shooter. Hey, Mandy. Welcome to the stream. It's like an on-rail shooter. This is pretty much exactly like Star Fox. Uh, or as we knew it over here. Uh, at least on the 64. Like that was. Hey, Sen. Welcome to the stream, my friend. How are you doing, buddy? This is a total hidden gem. Space debris. Honestly, guys. This is an awesome game. It's exactly like Star Fox. Um, it's really good. It's so unknown. Nobody talks about this game. It's a really good game. There you go. Nice disc art as well. Overblood? Oh no, I don't think I have Overblood. But I do have, next up, Star Sweep. Another pocket price Midas game. This is a puzzle game akin to Tetris. And that sort of thing. Actually, a pretty good game. Quite colourful, as you can see on the back. There's a lot going on in this. I got this for two pounds at Acorn Records fairly recently as well. Cool collection. Why, thank you, video game lover. Appreciate you being here, my friend. And there is a Star Sweep. Do I have Xena the Warrior Princess? I do have Xena the Warrior Princess, but on Nintendo 64, it's actually not terrible as a multiplayer game. It reminds me, I'm going to compare it to, uh, to um, uh, I was going to say Smash Bros, but Smash Bros is like 2D-ish. Um, but it, it's actually not that bad of a brawler if you play it as, if you play as a multiplayer. Uh, how am I? I'm good, man. You thanks, thanks for asking. Alright, next up. Is another is another game that uh, some of you may have heard is not so great, but I have a lot of I have a lot of uh, a lot of nostalgia for this, and it is um, Star Wars Masters of Terrace Kasai. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. Legend of Dragoon. I don't think I have Legend of Dragoon. I've got um, I've actually got a demo for the really hard to find one on the uh, on the Saturn, uh, but. Uh, which is actually the complete first disc, but I don't have many of the others. I think I've got some of them on the original Xbox. Um, the reason I'm so nostalgic for this is I used to rent this back in the day. I admit that this is not a great game. I admit that this is not a, not a not a great game. My best NES game? Do you mean like the 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 best one I have, or the best or the one I think is the best? I would say the one I have that I like the best. Is um, the Guardian Legend? I really like that game, and the PAL artwork for it is better as well. Uh, I've got the disc in here and the manual, of course, as well. Hey, no worries. Thanks for being here, guys. I appreciate you guys watching me go through my collection. It's actually pretty fun just to pick up the discs and talk about the games. 
we're going on for longer than I thought we would. We've still got about 30 games, I would say. Um, my maths is bad. Less than that. Less than 30. But you know, I, I could I could dive I could dive into the posters on my wall thing again. I think most of you would agree most of them are pretty cool. But I'm certainly not going to talk about <laughs> talk about the Avengers Seven Four poster again. Um, Strikers 1945. This is a really good game. Strikers 2 actually. I have one and two on the PS2 already. Uh, this is a great game. I'm really glad they did a PlayStation version of this. It's really good. Don't have the manual. But I do have the disc. I have this on the PS2. The PS2 version is a little bit better. Uh, it also has the first game on as well. So I'm pretty happy about this. You entered that one a few times. Not a bad fighting game. It is at, it's pretty It's pretty bad in fairness. It, Star Wars Masters of Terrorist Castle is pretty bad. But I played it so much I actually quite like it. Alright. Next up. Syndicate Wars. Hey thanks for subscribing Sen. Much appreciated my friend. We'll be live streaming tomorrow and the day after. Plus, you can check out my video game pickups, uh, which should be the feature video for subscribers on the channel. Plus, there's loads of extra stuff. So, thanks for subscribing, my friend. Awesome of you. Syndicate Wars. Uh, this is like a turn based game. I actually find this game pretty hard to play, especially with a PlayStation controller. But it's pretty awesome. I like the artwork. There's the manual and the disc. Thankfully, it looks like the sun's gone down, so I'm cooling off a little bit. I'm less sweaty than I was a minute ago. Alright, you guys have been talking about this for quite a while. Here it is. Siphon Filter. Ugh, love it. What are your favourite free games on PS1 if I had to choose? I can choose only three. That's real tough. Alright, so favourite games. I think I'm going to say Final Fantasy VII, Resident Evil 2, Tekken 3. It's a real tough one though. I want to put Jade Cocoon in there. Uh, or, or Smackdown. But I'm going to go with those. Tomb Raider was your favourite. <laughs> yeah. Tomb Raider is awesome. I had the Tomb Raider games. I no longer have them, unfortunately. Don't know what happened to them. But I still have one or two. Alright, this is an awesome game. You sucked at it, uh, Cabot. Okay, so I had a lot of fun on this game, but I had the most fun on this game by giving myself infinite health. Yeah, I cheated on this game. I gave myself infinite health, and I would taser people, and the taser had no range. So you could taser people on top of buildings from really far away. <laughs> taser them, and then knock them down. Oh my goodness, it was so much fun. Because um, you guys know me, I'm not so great on stealth games. There's an advertisement in there for the DualShock controller. And there's the disc for I work on it as well. It's very hard to use. It is indeed. My list would probably change as well, to be fair, depending on uh, depending on how I'm feeling. But I think I think most people would put Final Fantasy VII in their top. Most people would probably put Resident Evil 2 in their top. And Tekken 3, I could just play Tekken 3 forever. I could play Tekken 3 forever for sure. Next up, Cyberville 2. Because I love Cyberville. Ah, uh, love it. Absolutely love it. Um, don't know if I like this as much as the first game, but certainly great to have this in the collection. And this includes both discs, but I don't have the manual. Uh, need to complete that, missing the manual. Alright, speaking of Tekken, we moved on to the T's, and it is Tekken 1. Now check out this packaging, this is something unique. This is something very unique. Look at this case. Look at this. Cyber Field 2 was better. Look at this case. This is so weird. Great to see the games. It is indeed. It, I really like, you know, I like collecting. If I didn't collect uh, games, I would collect something that I couldn't literally play. Like I used to collect stamps and then I used to collect trading cards and, you know, models and stuff. So games, I can take these out and I can play them, so they're not just going to sit on the shelf, which is the best thing about it. You only have Tekken 3. Tekken 3 is, I think, one of the better games in the series. It's probably the best on the PS1, I think. Uh, I had Tekken 2 first, went back and got Tekken 3. This case is so weird. 
Simpsons Wrestling. Ah, oh, I don't have Simpsons Wrestling, but it's a good game. Uh, look at this case. The weirdest case I own. And look at that cover. Disc art, rather. Weirdest case I own. Really cool, though. All right. That's Tekken. Next up, Tekken 2. There were variants of this case, I believe. This is the one I have. Glad to have this. Tekken 2 is the one I had first. I uh, love this game. Absolutely love it. Love it to death. That's a really cool case. I know I haven't seen another case like that, to be fair, like Tekken. I haven't seen another case like it. Very unusual. The disc art on these games. Look at this disc art. That is like dead or alive standard of disc art. So much light you can't see it very well. So let me try and get that in an angle you can. Oh, well, there you go. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. I don't know why this uh, this says EB on it, but it does for some reason. So, uh, <laughs> I still think this is pretty pretty damn cool. Pretty damn cool disc art. Although you can't really see it that well because of the light. But it's better than not being in focus. <laughs> trying hard to find their identity at this point i know i think i think tekken tekken stayed away from uh for the most part i mean that that disc art is kind of borderline what dead or alive ended up moving towards with their beach volleyball stuff like that um but certainly tekken kept its identity of being more of a of a, of a fighting game and and less of that sort of thing maybe that case is japanese it, it could be I'd have to look it up, really. Your favourite Tekken is Tekken 2. It is certainly a very good one. My favourite in the series, though, is Tekken 3. I absolutely love this game. I had the Tekken Force mode, which is a side-scrolling mode. They've never brought it back. I love side-scrolling beat-em-ups. This had that mode in it. Or on the next ones, on the PS2, they had bowling, which was very good. But the side-scrolling beat-em-up, there's an advertisement with a fight stick in there as well. Um, really loved this game. Absolutely loved it. I did not have all of these at the time. Mo uh, a lot of these I picked up after the fact. Because at the time I, I certainly had a lot less, uh, I, I certainly had a lot less games. I had, let's say, between, uh, bet between 10 and 20. Next up. I spoke about it briefly earlier, Tenchu, Self Assassins. Your Tekken 3 is greatest hits. Yeah, I don't like those kind of uh, those kind of those kind of covers. If I can get the black box, I will. Um, cool game. It's a stealth game. What I like about these games is you're not tied to stealth all the time. You can go out there and kill stuff. Um, I've, I certainly have uh, issues when playing stealth games. So I, I do like to go and just kill stuff because that is that's how I play. That's my playstyle. But you know, I'm not directly opposed to stealth games, which is why I have Tenchu 2. How about that? This one, um, you wish you had a copy of Tenchu. This one is another one where you really don't have to um, you don't have to stay in the shadows. You love stealth. I know some people absolutely love it. I used to love it a lot more when uh. Like, pe people say that, um, hey, no worries, Jonan. I'll catch you later, my friend. Thanks for being here, my friend. And I'll see you next time. Your stuff got us hurt. People say that you get more patient when you get older. When I was younger, um, I, I was a lot more patient because I had a lot more time. So I could play stealth. Um, now that I'm, like, mid-30s, I have no patience. If I, if I can't do something in a game, I just get annoyed. <laughs> Turn it off. Uh, so I, I went the other direction. Alright, next up we have Tennis Arena for PlayStation 1. Now I picked up this game because I thought it was a different game. I think I might have thought it was Anacor um, uh, the, the RPG, that's it. I, th I think I thought it was the RPG. I just made some very strange noises. You must excuse many of the things that I've said during the stream. How many games do I own? Ooh, almost dropped it. Around about 1,500 or so, but for PlayStation 1, around about 100. I think I thought that this was an RPG, because looking at, looking at this, I thought it was an RPG, because it had an animated character on the front. 
Uh, it is not. Hey, there's an advertisement for Street Racer and Rayman on the back. That's kind of cool. Um, I, I think I thought it was like the one from uh, the, the Turbo Graphics, which is insane that I thought that, but nevertheless, there is an RPG on the Turbo Graphics. Next up, we do have an RPG. You have a big horror movie collection? Nice. I'm still trying to grab all of the horror movies I want. Your, your dream is to have that many? I know, right? My dream is to have even more. <laughs> um, Next up, we have uh, Alundra. Oh, love this game, The Adventures of Alundra. Absolutely awesome to have this. Um, got it for a really good price. It's in great condition, still has the sticker on it. That's why it's in a protective case. RPG, awesome RPG. Show you the back of the case. It's an awesome game. I'm really glad to have it in the collection. Uh, there's a free hints and chin there's a free hints, tips and cheats book inside. Uh, PlayStation magazine says one of the most enjoyable and addictive games ever to grace the PlayStation 9 out of 10. If I collected arcade cabinets, oh my goodness, I couldn't fit them in. Have a cabinet, I couldn't fit them in. I my 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 plan is to maybe have one like a main machine that can play like all like all different kinds of stuff. I otherwise I couldn't figure it fit it in. You played more games than you own. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, about 200 DVDs. Yeah, I'm, I wanted to have space for my books and DVDs in the game room, but I've eventually pushed them out into the, into the corridor <laughs> and down into my living room. Uh, so I'm still trying to figure that out. But there's the manual. And here's the hints, tips and cheats book. And also we have a map in here as well. I have everything in here. It's complete. Ugh. So good. So good to have this complete. There's the uh, little map that comes in, which I'm showing you upside down, I think. There you go. Hard game to get complete. Hard game with all of the extras. Alright. Hey, no worries, Mandy. Thanks for being here, my friend. And I will catch you next time. Awesome to have you here. And by the way, guys, if any of you are new to the channel and lurking in the background, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content and more live streams. All right, we have um, a couple of games left and then I'm gonna do a, a very small number of pickups and then we're gonna call it a day. But they're not, there's still a bunch of games left. If someone wants to buy my whole collection, would I sell it? That is an interesting question. I would, I mean, if they were to offer an outrageous amount, like way more the value, <laughs> Then I would say yes, because I would just buy them again. Uh, but I do have like an emotional connection to a lot of it. Um, I would, you know, I I would most likely say no. That seems, seems like something I probably would not do. Next up we have The Hunter. But yeah, it's one of those things like if someone was to offer an insane amount, then I guess I wouldn't be able to turn it down because I would just buy them again. My collection, compared to uh, other collectors, is relatively small. Hey Trevor, how are you doing my friend? What's up buddy? Uh, this is a tactical RPG. Pretty cool to have this. You may have seen the stream hiccup for just a second. The, uh, we lost 86 frames, so we lost like a second. <laughs> so we, we, lost, we lost like, according to OBS, 0.0%. Maybe we should have lost when I was talking about my Avenged Sevenfold poster. I don't hate Avenged Sevenfold. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, essentially, I'm saying if someone wanted to buy my collection, they would have to offer at least the amount of money my entire collection costed for me to buy again, plus some. <laughs> plus some to make it worthwhile. <laughs> hey, no worries, beautiful X Shadow. Thanks for being here, my friend. Awesome to have you here, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, you're, you're at your, uh, you're at your uh, mother's house, Trevor? That's awesome, man. I appreciate you being here, buddy. I think I already showed you this case, but man, I'm really hot right now, so. <laughs> How you doing, my friend? This actually isn't that great, this game. It has random, randomly generated dungeons. Uh, again, it's a pocket price Midas title, so the um, artwork is really bad. Oh my goodness, these cases. Come on. All right. Oh man, this game. 
This game. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. Time Commando. This game sucks. It's a, it's a, it's, I was about to say side scrolling beat em up, but it's a 3D beat em up. It's not good, guys. It sounds like it would be really awesome, right? It's a time traveling commando going back in time to kick some butt. But it's not. It's not good at all. Oh my goodness. There you go, there's the manual. I actually really like that artwork on the disc though. This game is super hard to play. Super hard to play. Alright. Next up. Absolute classic. Absolute classic. I love it because I love light gun games. It is Time Crisis. Love this game. Arcade action. True story guys, I once spent like over £20 in a Time Crisis arcade. I used to play things like Time Crisis, House of the Dead in the arcades. I would love light gun games. Uh, when it became possible to play light gun games at home on your own uh, TV, and these days you can still do it with CRT TVs, when it became possible I was all in. That is just magic to me. I absolutely love it. and. I love light gun games. What else can I say, man? I'm not necessarily pro at them. Uh, there's an advert for Point Blank there, a game that I should probably pick up. Awful platinum case, but whatever. Uh, manual in there. But yeah, absolutely love light gun games. Love them to bits. It is indeed a classic. Next up, of course, Time Crisis Project Titan. This has uh, a lot of extra content. Really cool game. I like playing it. This one has alternate uh, paths, I believe you can take. The branching paths, which is pretty cool. Especially for a shoot 'em up. This one advertises the G Con 45, which is the Namco light gun for the uh, PlayStation 1. There was a G Con 2 for the PlayStation 2. Manual in there advertises a memory card. I don't have any transparent memory cards. That would be really nice, actually. Alright, we're down to the final stack, guys. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Here we go. So I do have a Tomb Raider game. Tomb Raider, The Last Revelation. Ironically, the only one I have. The last. Uh, 10 out of 10. On PlayStation Magazine, Star Play, and Atmospheric. Beautiful, wonderfully crafted game, they say. A collection amazes you each time I show off. Why, thank you, Trevor. And I appreciate you being here, buddy. Awesome to have you. Um, I believe... This or the Dreamcast version has better music. Great to see how passionate I am about games. Oh, games is everything for me right now. Uh, like, I make videos, you know, X amount of days a week. And I'm playing games all the time. I'm recording games all the time, I should say. And most of the time I'm playing games, I'm recording them or streaming them. But uh, yeah, I, I love games, man. It, I, you can't, you've got to be passionate about it. If I wasn't passionate about it, I wouldn't be doing it. I love the, I love the, uh, I love the back of that. Quite cool. You know, I saw a um, win a holiday is to Egypt. Is it? Does it say a holiday with Lara Croft? No. Okay. They, I was thinking maybe they might have had like someone dress up as Lara. That would have been pretty fun. Dragon Warrior Monsters is advertised in here. I don't actually know what that is. Pretty cool. And we have another booklet here. Ah, oh, oh, I love it. I love it. Clothing line. This is so cheesy. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Look, look at these cool, look at these cool people. You could be that cool. You guys want to be that cool, right? I want to be as cool as, as cool as they are. I want to wear those clothes. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. That was fun. Oh no, Case, don't break. Don't break. All right. Let's move these a little closer to myself, because oh my goodness. All right. Tomb Raider 3 wasn't as good as, uh, as 2. I remember they changed the shape of Lara a lot in Tomb Raider 2. By that, they made her assets bigger. <laughs> uh, next game is Tunguska Legend of Faith. Now that's a, that's a great one. Say Tunguska 10 times and try not to get tongue-tied. I couldn't even say it once. Um, this is kind of an action horror game. Kind of an action horror game. It's a very dark game though, and when I say that I don't mean that the story is dark, I mean that in the literal sense it's probably a bit too dark. Uh, but there you go, 
Un Guska, the Legend of Faith. Look at this disc. This disc. This isn't the brightness on my on my camera. You can't tell at all. This is how it looks. That's crazy. You can't read the text on the disc. Maybe the disc got sun faded somehow. I don't know. The disc would have had to have been open for that. All right. Next up, game I recently picked up. Ubik. Um, based on work from the writer of Blade Runner, or I should say from the writer of Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, the book that Blade Runner was based off. Pretty cool game, interesting game. Um, they changed the visual style of this to be more like Blade Runner, uh, unlike uh, what it actually was, which is understandable. They want to take, uh, they want to take some of that, some of that recognition from Blade Runner, and run with it. And so they did. All right. Next up, amongst all this chaos, we have Urban Chaos. This is a third-person shooter. It's not actually that bad. It's pretty good. I like the characters. I like blowing stuff up. Who doesn't like blowing stuff up? You gotta love it. Manual in here as well included. This car is kind of unusual. I'm not sure what that kind of cat has to do with anything, but there you go. Actually, saying that, the cat didn't notice it. There's a cat in the moon. There's a cat in the moon. How about that? All right, well, that's wild. So next up, we have Wild 9. This is like a 2.5D game, I guess you'd call it. It's a side-scroller that's actually 3D. This game describes itself as weird and wild, and it really is. It uses gravity a lot. You only know Silent Hill, Tekken, and Lara Croft. That's fair, those are some of the more prevalent characters. Uh, this game is weird and wild. Or wild and weird, as it says on the back, I should say. You can get the official strategy guide, as it advertises on the back. And look at that, there's also an offer on here. Um, you can win a 9 days extreme sports holiday to California. Shouldn't let you see that number, really. <laughs> Uh, there's the there's the disc weird artwork on the disc like some monster face. Oh, well, that's all about Pretty cool and this game. I thought I think it was actually not that bad All right another wild game. Oh my goodness. How could I forget about this? This is a really really good Wild 9 is underrated. It is indeed Barbie Explorer and PS1 hat You know Killer Instincts Dead or Alive and Tekken all right, next up is Wild Arms. Yeah, I believe this is also on the PlayStation Classic Mini. If you wanted a legal way to play this very easily, that would be certainly a way to do it. This is a really good game. It's a role-playing game with a neo-western feel. It is really good, really, really good. The graphics are retro. They're not like they're not like three D like you would have on the on regular PlayStation games. Um, I really like the graphics on this game. They're like more like Super Nintendo, but with the PlayStation's color palette, so you get way more going on. Oh my goodness, the case! The case is so broken. You have the manual in here, of course, and the disc. Really good game, really good game. Don't sleep on it, it's a good game. All right, oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot about this game series. This would certainly be potentially a desert island game for myself. Hey Mike the Gamer, welcome to the stream my friend, how are you doing buddy? Next up we have Smackdown WWF as it says on the front here As it's now known as WWE, getting the F out was a slogan when they did so A 9 out of 10 from PlayStation Plus 5 out of 5 from C and VG 9 out of 10 from PSW 93% from PlayStation Max, 94% from Playsta Planet PlayStation, I almost said PlayStation PlayStation, and they keep going, they keep going. Very, very highly acclaimed game. You've got to have China the Rock and Mankind on the front here. Uh, really good game. These, these games um, were more arcade style, more fast and furious in gameplay than the wrestling sims of the 2K games you have right now. Um, much preferred them. Played them to death, they had better story modes than the games currently do. Uh, that China and Triple H on the front there, and then uh, on the manual again. All right, and next up, if you're gonna go down the route of SmackDown, you've gotta stop 
at SmackDown 2. Everything about the first game, same characters actually for this version uh, on the cover. The Rock raising an eyebrow. I can't kind of do it right. I look weird when I do it, don't I? Mm. Yeah, I don't look right. Um, <laughs> Triple H in China on the cover again. Um, they, they took everything about the first game and they just took it to another level. I believe these games didn't have uh, proper entrances, they just played videos behind the superstars as they walked down. WWF, I know, right? Uh, there you go. Our work on the disc is not so great, it's hard to see, but it's The Rock. And uh, yeah, there's the uh, manual as well. Smackdown, a show named after one of The Rock's catchphrases. I know, the great one, the Brahma Bull, as he was known. And finally, this is the last game of the PlayStation 2 collection, well sort of, because there's a couple of pickups. It is X2. This is a base shooter. No relief. Uh, sequel to a game, um, I want to say it was on the, uh, I forget, but I want to say it was on the Amiga. Um, really, really cool. Love this game. Um, base shooter, really good. Scrolling. It's... It's really good, guys. It's a really good shooter. I'm really glad to pick this up. Uh, the disc needs cleaning. The disc doesn't work so great, but it still works. It just about works. And I believe there's only one disc in here. Yeah, the rest of it's all blank. But it is really cool. And that's X2. All right, guys. I have a couple of pickups I can show you as well before we call it a night. First one moves us... Uh, very nicely in because it is a PlayStation game and I picked this up very recently from a charity shop for the low low price of £2 which is pretty much um, the location of which I pick up a lot of stuff and the average price of what I might pick up something for. Um, it is Future Racer, another Midas pocket price game and I believe this had a different title in Japan. It came out in the UK four years afterwards, I don't believe it came out in America. Um, and yeah, interest, interesting game, don't know much about it, it's a racing game, I can see some like anime clips on the back there, I don't know if you can see that too well, but there's some anime characters sort of on the back. It might have some sort of story, but other than that, I haven't played it yet because I just picked it up. The Attitude Era was really good in WWE. There you go, Future Racer. So this game looks really cool. And there are other titles available, it tells me on the back here, including Burning Ace, Crazy Canyons, GP Challenge, Hybrid. Oh, I actually have Hybrid. That's kind of cool. Uh, and others as well. So I'm picking up. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go for a Pocket Price Mida set, but certainly there have been some pretty cool games that have been localized through this set. And this only came out in this set. It didn't come out by itself. So you'll only get this in this cover variant over here. All right. And then, because I'm showing pickups at the end, these last two games will not be PlayStation 1 games. So if you've just tuned in, don't think I've gone crazy and I think that these consoles are the PlayStation 1 somehow. But I have gone slightly more crazy if we've continued through this anyway. Um, but we have uh, gone through a bunch, let me, let me show you guys, a bunch of PlayStation games. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, so many PlayStation games as we've gone through. And you saw the poster again, which I will not talk about. All right, let me try and fix the camera. Okay, next up, we have the Xbox 360. Earth Defense Force. I got this for £3. £3 was a really, really good price for this. Uh, it normally goes for at least 6 or 7 I got this in a uh, gold mine, I think it's called, in Yuki. Love this game series. It made it all the way to the Xbox uh, 360 and beyond, even to the PS4. Might not be able to tell well, on the clips on the back, but it's a really good game series. I'm glad to see you again, Trevor. I appreciate all you guys being here. You guys are awesome. I thank you guys for stopping by for my live stream. And I appreciate all of you. It warms my heart to see you guys here. Especially everyone that comes back, spending time out of their day in my streams. You guys are amazing. You love Earth Defense Force so much. I know they have some really cool games in the series. Um, but yeah, you guys are awesome. Thanks for joining the channel. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for everything you guys do. Um, you guys are awesome. Finally, of my pickups, last couple of pickups at the end of the video, uh, I had a game uh, that I actually already had 
Hey Sniper X, welcome to the stream my friend, and thanks for that like my friend, you're awesome. How are you doing buddy? Uh, I already had this on the PlayStation 2, but I had to pick it up on the PS4 because I found it for £6. And £6 is an absolute steal for this game because it's definitely worth at least 20 um, even second hand. Um, already had it on the PS2, but on the PS4 it will be widescreen. And it's Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy X 2, the HD remaster. Didn't have this on the PS4, thinking about streaming it down the line. So I knew I had to pick it up. Looks pretty awesome. No manuals in PS4 games, of course. Um, but this guy is still pretty nice. It was pretty dirty when I got it and I cleaned it up nicely. And as that takes us to our last couple of pickups, nicely to the end of the video. Thanks everyone. Hey, no worries Sniper X. Appreciate you being here my friend and thank you for the like. Thanks everyone for being here. Um, you can always go back and watch the stream through uh, as a replay or you can check out some of my video game pickups on the channel as well. My pickup videos on the channel uh, have gameplay footage for every game included as well. So you'll want to check those out. Remember I'll get this side too and Ari Kovronik for PS2 and 99p <laughs> for uh, buy one get one free offer from game years ago. That's pretty cool. That's, uh, that's a good way to get games. That's why I get a lot of stuff second hand guys because I get stuff real cheap. You'll see in my pickup videos I will pick up maybe one or two uh, of the most modern system and uh, most of the time those will be second hand in themselves but man <laughs> but man uh, I will pick up a lot of stuff. You'll get an alarm clock so you don't miss the next stream. <laughs> most likely I will probably be late though. Uh, I'm definitely streaming tomorrow from around about the same time so from 8.30 p.m. UK time and I will be streaming The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on the Nintendo Switch. That'll be the next game I'm streaming. And that's going to be a ton of fun. So I'm going to really enjoy that. Hey, thanks for being here, Sniper. And thank you, everyone. You've all been awesome. Uh, actually, guys, let's do, let's do a raid. Because uh, it's been a while since I've done a raid. And we're going to spread the love somewhere else. Um, so let me go find a uh, perfect, perfect person. Perfect person. Um, good friend of mine. Big Boss Incarnate, he is an awesome streamer, you guys are going to absolutely love him. So I'm going to go put the uh, put the link into the chat so we can read him. And that's going to be awesome, good way to spread the love. So here we go. If you guys want to raid Big Boss Incarnate, uh, go follow that link and put the hashtag MVL Raid in the chat. Other than that guys, if you like the video, please leave a like or a comment to let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. And if you'd like to, you can also support me on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. That really helps out. Other than that, guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to join the raid through the link in the chat with the hashtag MVL raid. Once again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for watching. I've been MVL, and I will catch you next time.